Let's call the Concord School Committee, to school committee meeting to order. And I'm calling the Concord Carlisle Regional School Committee to order. We're being recorded. Thank you, Concord Carlisle TV. Any public uh, comments? No? Okay. So we'll move right to recognitions. And uh, who would like to? Do you want to kick off what we're doing? Want to start or? Do you have well, this is our recognition, so we can start there, I think. Right, so tonight's Melissa's last meeting. Um, right up till the 24th hour, she's at a meeting, because tomorrow's the election. So we're glad for that. Uh, I'll start, if that's okay. Sure. You know, Melissa, you're a huge support behind the scenes on just helping us keep on track and keeping track of different aspects of different things, whether it be open meeting procedure or some of the contract work we need to do, that just always that clean set of eyes with the, de the eye for detail, which mm -hmm. I am so grateful for from this seat because in the pace it's so hard to get to that. And, yeah. um, you're so thoughtful about it and so nicely and gently say, I think we might change <laughs> that. <laughs> it's not critical or judgmental, it's just meant to be supportive and that's so clear. So. Um, very grateful for that all year long. It's been enormously helpful, as the well as this, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as well as just this demeanor that takes it all in and says the right thing at the right time and um, gives us a nice perspective to, to stay on track. So thank you for that. Thank you. I'll jump in. I would love to say a thank you. Um, and I wrote not all whole speech this time, which I could lose and, and have to try to remember. It's such a I can see it. I know, because it's concept. Talking points. Yeah, I know my talking points. It's very concise. But, but what I did was, I wrote down the words that I thought of when I thought of Melissa. And obviously, the legal expertise is something that we've all benefited from, and I think that's kind of a, a given. But the other ones that were more important to me are that Melissa is so clear-headed um, and just thinks about things very clearly um, and rationally, I guess that's one of my other words, it's very rational um, and insightful. There's always something that Melissa comes up with that I haven't thought of in any discussion, which I really appreciate. Um, quite detailed, um, and there were other words that came along with this, but calm was one of them, um, calming, and just the advice that you've always given, the thoughts that you come up with, I have found very helpful, especially given your long tenure on school committees. Mm -hmm. And so even though we've only crossed for a year here, right. mm -hmm. I have felt like you've just brought so much to my learning over the past year that I really appreciate it. Thank so you. thank you for all the time. See, I was concise. <laughs> so I, um, I'll get all mushy, so I'm just gonna say, you were a friend before you joined the school committee and you will remain a friend long after that. Um, but. You, as far as being a member of the school committee, um, so professional, so helpful, so even keel, um, everything that everybody has said. And up to 10 minutes ago, we were kind of like, what do you think, Melissa? Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. but, like, who were we there in that chair if this is going to be empty? So we will miss you. Thank you. Melissa, I mean, I, I'm always in awe of people that uh, spend a lot of their free time mm -hmm. on public service, and I think that's uh, six years on the committee. I said that about Bill Fink a few months ago, and uh, you know, it's just, it's just great because we need people, and we know that probably better than most. We need yeah. people like us, you know, to, to be on those committees. I mean, it's really true, it's really true. And I, I think, uh, you know, six years is, is great. I, we only work together for a year, but you know, what's been said already, I, I feel completely comfortable with you. You're, uh, you know, you're calm-minded, I would say, you know, because they, sometimes people get a little passionate here and there, but you're, you look at it very rationally and, and uh, you know, factually and so forth, and I think that's, uh, that's a real positive attribute. And, and also, you know, you, you know a lot about, obviously, legal matters that we all know, but you also had a lot of good input in the budget subcommittee that I thought was very helpful. And so I, I think we're going to very much miss you. And, uh, you know, we maybe in a few years. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's Please right. do. So if you remember, Elise is what? Fifth grade? I have a fourth grade. Oh, oh, 
perfect. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know what Bob's talking about, people who aren't calm, but... <laughs> yeah, I, <know. laughs> I don't know what he's talking about, but, um, no, I don't know what about, No, I would, uh, I, I, I missed my seat over there. No. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and, you know, I wish we'd had more time to serve together, because I've enjoyed it. And uh, you're thoughtful, and you're intelligent, and you've been at this. And, uh, for a while, and um, you've got the kids' best interest at heart, and uh, that's what it's about. And uh, we're going to miss you. I'm sure they're going to miss you and Carla. And uh, we would like nothing better to hear that you were running again <laughs> down the road because we'll all benefit by it. So, good luck. Why don't my dear Melissa Lennon? Oh, yeah. no! <laughs> Now, I didn't realize I was the only one on when you were on before of this group. Yeah. 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 I was in Carlisle. But, uh, not here. So I was like, wow, one year. Wait, we've been together for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> that guy replaced me. Well, but now, I'm, now i got to go through it. But anyway, so here's my, my letter to you I wrote today. Dear Melissa, I want to thank you for the time and energy and commitment you've given to the Regional School Committee for the past several years. When I first arrived five years ago, we were in quite a state. There were many fires to put out and I had no idea where to start or how to spend my time. At every meeting my head was filled so full it took me days to digest. But you, you were the calm one. You were always careful in your comments and always willing to offer your insights. Five years later, that has not changed. You are as consistent as the day is long. I can always count on a thoughtful response and a careful inspection of all issues. You're never boastful or outspoken. Oh, I'm not doing that up. <laughs> you are, you are quite, quite the opposite, which allows for us, after heated discussion, to finally turn and ask, what do you think, Melissa? <laughs> you take a breath, pause, and usually offer a two to maybe three senses that's capture, that captures your thoughts and ideas precisely. You've taught me to be more careful and thoughtful before speaking. You possess an enormous amount of knowledge and understanding of regional issues, law, and history. You reset us when we stray from pertinent issues. And you offer a steady hand and a reliable resource as we navigate all the issues that come our way. But five years later, one thing has changed. You've become a great friend. A friend I have, count, have come to count on in a pinch. A friend that is loyal, that is warm-hearted, and is always has a sense of humor. I will miss all of this in our school committee dealings very much, and I hope I have a direct line to you as we venture without you at this table. I hate that, but I know that you are still out there listening and caring, because you always have. So thank you for your service, your commitment, your energy, your time, and most of all, your friendship. Enjoy your newfound time. I expect to still get some of it. <laughs> thank you. Very much. That was all too kind. So, so, um, for those of you that don't know, Melissa's putting in a patio, so she's going to like spend all kinds of time out there. Um, so we thought this might help decorate it. Oh, thank you, Mary. You shouldn't be carrying. I don't, that's I don't know if you have a green thumb. That's your PT. Oh, yeah. thank you very much. This is anybody can grow the road. Oh, that's what I need. Because I'm not going to Thank you very much. And Melissa, if it's a little nippy out there, you have your official Oh, good, Kyle. Fabulous. And monogrammed and everything. That's because school committee is a varsity sport. That's right. It's like, what's the opposite of sub? It's like beyond varsity. Professional sport. You are on the A team. If I might, I want to oh. say thank you. You and I have overlapped for a matter of weeks. Quality, <laughs> Quality <laughs> weeks. Uh, and people have said it very, very well. I was waiting to hear the word care, and of course that came up. And the, the other word that comes up uh, frequently when I think about the counsel you've given me and the time we've spent together is thoroughness. Be thorough. 
I think that's the uh, the message you sent to all of us, uh, and you did promise that we did have a line to you uh, following your service on the yeah. school committee. And uh, with no open meeting law concerns. Yeah. <laughs> and, and sometimes we hear that as just pro forma stuff. And then sometimes uh, somebody makes a commitment like that, and we know it's genuine and very real, and in fact might uh, be very useful to us, yeah. certainly to me. So again, in my short time, I've uh, uh, become very grateful to you as well. Thank you. Well, thank you to everyone. Um, I have uh, had an amazing six years. It's, as everyone at this table knows, it's complicated, it's long, <laughs> it's a lot of mental energy, um, but it's the people that you serve with that really make it um, rewarding, and um, I have learned something from every single one of you, and uh, I've served with I was, I, when Dan was saying a couple weeks ago, he had mentioned to two other people that he had served with, I served with a lot more people than I mentioned. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, um, but every single person brought their unique talents and their unique strengths, and, I, and that's what makes a school committee um, strong and effective, is just everyone listening to everyone else's perspectives. And um, I'm very, very grateful to come back for this one year because it is different serving on the regional school committee mm -hmm. that's serving in Carlisle, and it's um, it's great. You get to learn from new people, and you get to contribute to a collective effort. and And I just thank you for having me back, and I'm so glad that I did. And I think I'm going to miss it more than I just <laughs> <laughs> I do think that. And uh, thank you so much for all your work, both of you over there. Um, a lot of unsung efforts it's, go it's on. It's been that, an absolute um, pleasure, Melissa. So thank I will you. miss you both. Again, thank you, Melissa. Really appreciate it. Um, next on the agenda is, is no this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is it. Next on the agenda is reading the minutes of April 9th. Um, everyone have a chance to look at them. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting of the minutes of the April 9th meeting. Second. Uh, any discussion? I just had one comment on them. Just uh, Brian's last name, Schlegel, was with an A, I think. It, uh, the second to the last letter is E. Good guess. Right? S E H E L G E L. Right. Yeah. No A's. No A's. Ready for a vote on them? Can I have a motion? I did. You got it. Molly seconded. Oh, second already. Um, let's go to the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Okay. Next um, item on the uh, agenda is uh, the presentation of the Campus Advisory Committee. Um, I, just to give some background on this, I was along with Mary, uh, the second school committee member on that committee, and uh, went to all the meetings and am very much uh, uh, impressed and experienced uh, a high level of energy and uh, research and discussion and uh, it was just very rewarding as you'll see when you see the uh, presentation and if you delve into the report there's a lot of information there and uh, it was just an incredible effort so thank you very much Mary. Thanks Bill. So, I'm going to stand up to do the presentation because we've got a, a PowerPoint, but I want to echo what Bob said. Um, we've got a few of our committee members here tonight. Um, when I thought we had, when I saw we had 16 members on a committee, I thought we're not going to go anywhere, right? We got, we got principal, we got parents, yeah. we got a superintendent. <laughs> No, Thanks, but the whole point, right? Was Aren't you glad you came? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the whole point was to get a lot of different views, like Melissa was saying earlier, and yeah. we certainly got that, but yeah. we were able to move it um, forward. Um, so I'm going to stand up and, and kind of walk through this presentation, which I don't know that this was in your packet. Um, do I have to yell for this, or? Uh, no, it should be fine. Okay. So. Uh, 
I'm going to introduce my committee members in just a second. Can I just mm -hmm. enter and go to the next one? No. The arrows. Right arrow. Okay. Okay, thanks. So what we're going to cover really simply is our charge. Review the charge because you gave us the charge almost a year ago. Who was on the committee, the process we went through. Um, I want to have one of our members walk through the existing conditions and then talk about our specific recommendations, which we'll do using the full board there. Um, so this is our, and I should say, um, I put together this quick slide presentation. You've got a 30-page report. I know you all read it. Um, we're happy to take questions, but nothing that I'm sharing here is, is not in the report. I just kind of wanted to make it a summary presentation. Um, so what our charge was to study the current and potential future use of the high school property. Um, two things we were tasked with is to create a campus assessment report focusing on the needs and uses, including an inventory of all the organizations that use the campus. And we actually had a slide doing that, but I, it's in the report. Huge long list and, and growing every day. Um, the other thing we're in charge with is to create a report providing prioritizing recommendations, and that's what we've done actions concerning the land above the landfill and then any adjacent open land. The things we had to keep in mind are that the high school facility is, is to serve the educational needs of the students. Like that's the first priority. And also any recommendations we made are just advisory in nature. Obviously the school committee makes any final decisions. So that was our charge. So membership, there's our 16 or 17 people. Um, you can read the list. Um, if you wouldn't mind standing, Kathleen, I'm going to ask you to come forward because you're going to help present. Kathleen Antifasser was one of our committee members. Michael Mastrulo, Susan Lude Blevins, Mary McKay. Have I missed? I'm not. Yeah. If, please feel if you want to. You can stand up. If you want to chime in at any point during the presentation, please do. I've given Kathleen a very specific job. <laughs> so. At a very high level, this was our process. We held 14 meetings. Um, one of them happened to be a site walk, which was in like November or something. It was very cold. December? Yeah. December. And um, we had several in public input sessions here in Concord and in Carlisle and gathered all kinds of feedback. Um, we reviewed a lot of relevant documents. The list of those documents is in the report. Um, ancient agreements between the towns and just like <laughs> everything. Um, we re reviewed a lot of relevant documents. And one thing, um, we really encourage public engagement, and Kathleen will probably like to talk about this, our public engagement plan, but the idea was, and I've had a lot of feedback from people saying, <coughs> I never thought of that. I never thought, that's a really cool idea. We just said, put it out there. All ideas are valid. We're not going to criticize any ideas. Let's hear them all. Um, very collaborative. And then we evaluated those ideas versus a rubric. And these are the things that we took into account as we evaluated them. You can see the ed educational impact was at the top of the list. I should say, um, cost is obviously a sensitive issue for many of the, as these ideas, or probably all of the, all but one idea, we have like little in the way of specific costs. It's kind of this bigger than a red box, kind of a guesstimate on, in terms of cost. Um, it's just too early to have any really specific information. Um, but we did let that spoil our, our thinking. Um, and so, and then the final is we de developed the recommendations you'll hear tonight. So, this is, per, uh, this, this, this doesn't display well, but this, I guess it does up there. This is one of my favorite pictures of the campus because that is the, the band Pops last summer. Uh, on the, at the amphitheater. So one of these great uses of our campus property. It was just a beautiful night. But we're going to talk, this is, and I should give Kathleen a lot of credit for these really cool slides, but I'm going to have her talk through the existing conditions. So kind of lay out the campus and, you know, where the trees are, where the landfill and all that to orient you and talk a little bit about what some of the limitations are to the property. So I've got the three or four slides on existing conditions. Go ahead. Some of you have seen this um, before, but basically we took CAD files that were available for the site as a whole from the recent high school renovation, landfill, and uh, field projects. And 
We were able to put them all into one place and develop the plan that you see up here as well as on the board, on the table, and just kind of started looking at the obvious. So you see the buildings and the parking and how many parking spaces are on the site as a whole, what is the vehicle circulation, um, where we have wetlands um, on the site, which is really to the north and east of the site, north and west of the site. Um, where there are wooded areas, where there's trees, um, as well as open land, open grasslands and fields, which is sort of in that lighter green. And if you look to the next slide, we then took it the next level from all those documents that Mary talked about that we studied and read. You know, we identified, we had the zoning map, have the property line on here. We have the 100 foot wetland buffer zone from the wetlands, we identified is where we are, we're in a zone two water protection area, we're in residential zone A for educational use, wetland conservancy district and a groundwater conservancy district. Also on the site are a high yield and medium yield aquifer, which are your, this blue line and this more purple line here, generally speaking. Um, the DD center lease area is in the Navy uh, line and then roughly the landfill area, which is the double pink line. And all of this here on this map, it's very rough. So these are, this isn't like this has been surveyed onto the topographic map. It's just as a graphic for us that we use to kind of understand what's going on on the site. Other things that we know that we took note of are the slopes, because generally industry standard, anything over 15% slope, which is the grade of the land, is unbuildable. Uh, slopes that are between 8 and 15 are really close to unbuildable. You can get roads up there, but you're really not doing walkways without extensive intervention. Um, we also identified a few areas that um, are being used for stormwater management uh, for detention basins, which are these blue areas. Um, on the site, one is the, the largest one is that long space in front of the high school, back of the high school. Um, other, other things that are on the site that it's used for is the cross country route, which you can map, but there's lots of other things that happen on the campus as well. Um, and it's sort of boiled down to what's left. Um, and we generally identify wooded areas that were left with the magenta colors and then non-wooded areas, which are very small, that are also left. We, I should note here that this is overlapping with that detention basin, just because we have, and you'll hear some sort of further discussion, the theory that that could potentially be usable space depending on how it's treated. Talk to the landfill? Sure. Um, so the <coughs> landfill work was wrapping up as we were getting started. And the AUL, which is an activity use limitations document that uh, designates exactly what can and cannot happen on the landfill now that it's been capped. You're all probably very familiar with all of this. The current <coughs> solution was 22 inches of soil cap, um, which also has a notification layer. Um, and having that there means that there is no significant risk to anyone who's on the cap now. Um, but there is restriction to human use and activities, meaning that you can't come in contact with the soil below this cap and are generally restricted to activities that, are, that um, only occur in, that do not wait. Yeah, just on top of it. Yeah. Not in or yeah. under or through, yeah. right, the cap <clears throat> itself. Um, is there another one? So, yeah, yes. this, so here's the Right, activities. so basically, the with this landfill and the way it's been capped, we need to maintain a permanent solution. That's what they call it. Um, and so the passive uses that they generally have identified, which are like paving it, um, having an open lawn, having a parking area, having a park or recreation area, do not disturb the cap. Other activities that might disturb the cap is not consistent with keeping the permanent solution. So anything that starts to dig into it, break through it, and that type of thing, is going to um, mean that you have to then have a new permanent solution and a new resolution for that. <coughs> so it's not that it can't be done, but it would be awfully expensive and repeating a process that has been completed. Um, I'm at the state level with the state. Yes. EPA, that's that, that level of a new 
AUL, what you're talking about, right? Right, but it's it's an, um, administered at the local level through CONSCOM, through your CONSCOM. Oh. No, no uh, I believe it's all state. It's just yeah. at the state, state level? I believe okay. so. I could be yeah. wrong about that, but I believe okay. that's yeah. the case. Yeah, so that would be where it's at. So that sort of I'm set, not the expert, sorry. So. <laughs> <coughs> um, that sets the stage for our process, how we did this, what some of the limitations are on the current um, site. You, Eddie, but I want to make this pretty informal. Thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> Don't go too far. Um, so I want to talk about our specific recommendations that are in the report, and I want to take them one at a time. Um, <coughs> it's probably best if you ask questions as we go through each one. Um, uh, I don't have a pretty graphic for this one. Parking. Yeah. Who wants to talk about parking at the high school? Oh, we uh, haven't heard much about this. Yeah. Can you yeah, tell us right. what the problem is? So, so we certainly acknowledge the demand, the current demand for parking. Like, there's no, there's no question there. Uh, I think what the campus advisory committee's message is. Well, I know what the message is. Is be careful where the administration adds parking to the property because we don't want it to preclude any of the projects that we're about to talk to talk about. So yeah, we decided to know. I won't say. But we just wanted the administration to be careful about where parking goes in. Okay? Mary, one of the things that I noticed in the previous slide was about that um, the parking is called a passive change that would not demand a new AUL. Oh on the um, that one. On the landfill. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Um, does that include like if you needed fencing or lighting or right those would dig into the town yeah. yeah okay <clears throat> all right so can we be finished with parking questions on parking and Kathleen has this really cool charrette with life size or you know um, mm -hmm. what do we call it? what is it what? Um, it's a plan and it's graphics a, of the different So you can kind of see to scale you know, what different things would look like on the property. So our first recommendation is for a track and field, I want to say track, but it would, we would also host the field event, so I want to be very careful about that. Because putting the running and the throwing events in the same location is a fabulous thing because that doesn't happen today and there are a lot of students um, that are impacted by the need to, for, to have the throwing events here and the running events there. And we can't, there's a lot of issues around students trying to participate in both, fans trying to, parents trying to go to both events. A um, lot of limitations around using the field down in Emerson because they're running into each other literally. Um, so this is one of our recommendations. And I should say all of these, I'm not going to go through all of the pros and cons for each of these recommendations that are in the report. Do you want to show like kind of how sure. the idea? And let me just say one thing: the each of these has this red border of about it's sort of a proposed location for that recommendation. So this one is on the landfill site. So Mary, is that um, are these recommendations coming in in prioritized order from the committee or no? I think well, that's what you asked. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, Xander's not here tonight, so Xander <laughs> might be honest why I don't. Okay. No, I, I, I want to be careful about that because um, you'll see as we get through the later ones that you can do one or two or three of these together or, you know, mm -hmm. one doesn't necessarily preclude the other from happening. Mm -hmm. So this, I would argue this was, I want to be careful how I speak for the committee, but this was, this is a, a top priority, mm -hmm. but we did not specifically rank them. Okay. But in the... Is that hedging enough? Sure. Yeah, I, I didn't get the sense when I was reading it that, but I, I, I just wanted to be clear when you were giving the presentation whether you were going in order of, of a priority or the top five generally. This, these, oh, these, these, are, to the top these are the recommendations to move forward. Okay. These are the only recommendations, so they are the top five. And this the isn't the okay. one, two, three, four, five. Mary, uh, Mary, Mary yeah. can I, I um, did want my Instagram came, I teach at the high school. But I think one of the things, and I was on the committee, but one of the things that came up the last minute was, I mean, not at the last minute, the last meeting was this idea that some of the uses are better suited for some of the land that's available. So I think with respect to the track, I, I don't want to, I think with respect to the track, we decided that the best um, use for the, at the landfill would be the track or 
No, that's a that's a good point. It's 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 probably the best place on the high school property to put a track, and the best use of the landfill is to put a track on. And may I and add a summary sure. explanation? So yeah. each one of the recommendations you have in there has um, in the report subsections. So the committee made sort of a recommendation or this is the best place we think it can, either it can't be anywhere else or we'd recommend these, this place or several places, as well as any comments on cost and overlapping <coughs> uh, issues. And I do not have a copy in front of me to verify. I think there was one other sub category you don't have it in front of you. Um, so each one we sort of tried to lay out the pros and cons and then in general it was felt that because the funding is unknown and the costs are unknown it was hard to put any of these in a priority order because timelines can be very different depending on if funding is available some are more low-hanging fruit and some you will need to raise money for. So it seems like overall the I'm looking through these I'm looking at the full report here mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. um, you have recommendations whether to continue to explore or, or not basically drop from further consideration. So we're now looking tonight at all the ones that are continued to explore. Yes. And they could conceivably be explored in tandem. It could be a couple of them or, you know, right. or so staggered. So the Campus Advisory Committee's recommendation is to look at these five. Right. It's yep. up to the school committee to say, one. All right. right. This um, one first, or this one most and important. We, Got we, it. When we're done with this, we should talk as a committee about so what our next steps. What's next? Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. Would you like me to show? Do you want to see the track? Yeah. Yes. The dog and pony show here. Mm -hmm. Can everyone see the board mm -hmm. except yes. for the camera behind me? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I apologize. Um, but first to the committee. So this is the area of the landfill. Here's the high school. North is at the top of the page. This is at 100 scale, so if you want to come and grab a scale to measure. Uh, this is a six-lane track, and this is an eight-lane track, which would you know, be suitable for competitions. And then these are the additional field events, which do, can, in fact, fit within uh, certainly the majority within the six, all of them within the eight, but there's land in adjacent that they could all manage to fit in this general area together. Because of the sizes of the tracks themselves, it physically does not fit on another location on the campus unless some, no, just no, that's enough. It does not fit <laughs> yeah. I'm stopping myself from previous conversations. Being so is, is throwing inside a track, is that what customarily schools do? Oh, oh. It's possible to do that, yes, and schools do do that. Right now, we have our throws up near the turf, and mm -hmm. we are out of track. Do people throw inside Emerson? No, um, the town, I think it's the town, but the town won't let us do that. Oh, okay. So. And the difference between the six and eight, so coming and to eight shoot. lane track, you could have a, you could have like a state level or a conference level. But a six one could host a dual. A six lane could host a dual meet. Okay, great. And I think it would, an eight and a six would impact how much parking you can have on the site too. Xander Presser is a senior and a member of our committee and on the track team. Hi, I'm a little sorry. It's okay. We're talking about Hi. the track team. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> I'll just get a little bit more to the, uh, the border area, uh, which will accommodate six or eight. But then you mentioned that corner spot on this one. Does that spill out over the bordered area on this slide, Kathleen? Are you talking about this area No, here? bring it in closer. Here? When, yes, when you referred to that area. So in this area, the slopes start to really shift. Um, but the adjacent, so you can just kind of play with here a little bit. You could start to do some grading. And if it was desired not to have these inside the field, you have additional adjacent space to configure them in various ways. It's so with grading, it would pull out, out of that border there. The Is border of the landfill? The border. The, the, red, the, red, the red border, border. that we've drawn? The red line shouldn't be seen as a border, rather than well, a general area to consider. Yeah, I'm not as careful a, about trying to design it here. Okay. Yeah. As opposed to over here. It's saying this general 
site on the campus. That additional piece you put in changed mm -hmm. this out, this rough outline. No, I think it doesn't. It, it doesn't okay. because the red dash line is really to say the general location on the campus, not a footprint for the okay. idea. Any other questions and, on the Yeah, any other? Yeah, right, no, that's better. Um, it's on the consideration of six lane versus eight lane. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, cost is going to be one factor. Um, additional space or space used and what's left for parking is another. Are there other considerations that come into the discussion of if we were looking at a track, whether it was six lane versus eight lane? Do you want to address the actual usage of six uh, versus eight? I, I'd like to first point out just not specific to track running, but on the site is the skate park, and mm -hmm. impacts to that need to be considered when you're looking at the plan as a whole. Mm -hmm. Any of this, yeah. I think any additional project would be, would factor in, correct? Of the five, you said you might be able to do multiple. Right, right. And whether it's a six and an eight would impact that, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, well, I, for me, speaking of six versus eight lanes, uh, just, you know, when there's 170 kids on the track at once, um, it, as much space as you can have is always better um, because you know right now we'll be working out down at Emerson and there will be distance runners trying to run in lanes one and two and then over on the home stretch uh, where the sprinting side is that'll be where the sprinters are uh, in like three and four and then there's hurdlers in five and six and then you know if there's people trying to cross to get to different lanes and you know when you're coming around the curve it's it's there's a lot of traffic, um, it, you know, with 170 kids, it, it makes it harder to work out. And sometimes, like, it could really be dangerous, like, you know, if a senior uh, sprinter, you know, one of the bigger guys was, like, coming around the corner really, really fast, and there's a small, you know, freshman walking across the track. I mean, they, they could get really hurt uh, if they decided. Um, so, you know, that's definitely a consideration. So I think the other consideration is just the difference between the six and the eight is if there was an eight lane track, you could hold, right? We're, we're right, right, that now, was the other, right. right yeah. now at the end of the season, the conference meet, the DCLs, or a big relay meet, or um, some kind of twilight meet, or the state meets, which there are several iterations of the state meet, including like the New Englands, really needs to be held on an eight lane track. And I think there is income potential, right, uh, to, I guess, to recoup it. some of the costs mm -hmm. or right. bring in money. You mm -hmm. know, I think Weston just to justify track, the cost difference, basically, right, yeah. using yeah. a lot of the money that came from concessions, even. So, mm -hmm. it, it it's worth considering from that perspective that you might mm -hmm. be able to hold a bigger event. Anyway, do do we have any figures on how many? Eight lane tracks versus six lane tracks exist at high schools in the state. Do you? you we do, do, and I could get those numbers pretty quickly. I assume that Steve Lane has them, um, but I know that. So there are four eastern divisions, and then like central and west division. When we get to like the state level, and those meets are all trying to be held on. Like ideally Friday Saturday as opposed to Friday Saturday Sunday, which we've just had that Sunday experience. We're on that rotation, and one of the reasons you end up using all those days is tied to the access to a, a track and a six-lane track. We do end up on a six-lane track at like the state meet, which is a. I mean, it's you can't put the eight finalists are in a sprinting event can't be on the track at the same time if you're on a six lane track so then you divide that in half and it gets mm -hmm. I mean there's some equity issues I guess so Mary you said something that I, I want to go back to the slide on parking sorry Mike but um, depending on you know s some of these projects right like if we were to host events and I'm not saying we know this yet but we could need additional parking based on what we do at the landfill or any place else on campus. So I don't want to lose sight of that for um, most events. Well, so I, I think, you know, mostly for Saturday, Sunday, like if there were a big invitational meet, you know, there's not a lot of people in the school parking lot. And then also, you know, the landfill area, that's like not where everyone's 
parking in the afternoon because you know all the parents and stuff coming to watch the other games all the other fields are down on the uh, other end of the campus and so all park people parking illegally on that side of the campus like on the grass and then like in front of the no parking signs and in front of the fire hydrants and stuff like there's there's still you know a ton of open spaces in after school on um, in that picture on, on the right mm -hmm. side uh, mm -hmm. of the parking lot so you know I are you, are you proposing that we tow those cars? <laughs> I was just going to say. So I wasn't aware of that. I, I, think, I think actually most of those are parent cars. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to remind you we were being taped. Yeah. <laughs> we need more student truth. We've had a lot of student engagement yeah. on this committee. It's been great. great. Yeah, it's been great. Um, other questions or comments on the track before we move to the next one? So, so I think the parking uh, issue related to the eight-lane track is the, the area we've discussed recently about temporary parking wouldn't be available anymore. Is that a fair statement? Well, if we call it temporary parking. But in a permanent parking plan, it may available. factor in. Yeah. Um, but we wouldn't be able to do that and do an eight-lane track. Um, no, if that's I, I I don't know. Do you know that? So, That's where I was going with my question. Um, so depending on where this is cited, there's still potential to, obviously wouldn't be in this exact configuration. I apologize, you can't necessarily see it. There can be parking and track, but it, it really takes uh, an actual plan to work that and, and make it work. Yeah. So I want to just clarify what I said not just building a track, any of the projects that we're going to talk about may bring more cars to campus. That's, I'm not trying to focus on the track there, any, any use. Kay up I'm going to tell you, Kay, Kay was also on the committee. She's got a UK with an injury and she was gracious Sorry. enough to make it tonight. Thanks, get it. We're running through the recommendations. The, the next one on the list is a recreation building. And it's kind of a vague term, but it's really two potential buildings. One would be an indoor ice rink and the other would be a field house. And our premise is that, that the campus can really only handle one more building. And these are the sort of the two choices. Um, lots of discussion about where they can potentially be. You can see the three um, outlines, I'll call them. One is, can I touch this? One is, it's between BD, it's on the stormwater detention basins between BD and the parking lot in front of the, in front of the school, <laughs> the student parking lot, you want to show them? And, um, or over here, more towards the landfill side. We eliminated the landfill as an option for another building because of the whole cap issue. I don't really want to harp on that. And then the other option would be up, up what do we call these, the upper fields. But it would mean, the, and this was kind of high in the sky stuff, we're trying to be creative. It would be relocating that field somewhere else. Um, Is there potentially on the landfill? Oh. Because you can have a field on the landfill. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's a trade off. What but, about in one of the other spots where a building could go? In front, in the, um, over the drainage area. If you can put a building the there. Here? Right. Could you I mean, put a field there yeah, that, so, and the building up there? Yeah. The, yeah, the, okay. so, so, and the report talks about this. We haven't done any kind of study about what it would mean to put a building where the stormwater detention basins are. We have, we've had some healthy discussion. Um, we have very strong opinions on either side. So um, that would definitely take some work to figure that out. Okay. It's kind of, to even there, sure it's an option. I think. Yes. Yeah. But it well, seems I mean, to in be theory, it's an option where the field is. If, if we right. feel that we really need an ice rink or a field yeah. house, yeah. That's an option. It's going to be an expensive one to relocate a field, but it's an option. In that, Man. Of course. In, in that space, I mean, those are all the same size, right? Roughly. You can that'll have, that space will house a hockey rink. I know. Stand. It's small. I know. I can't. Oh, sorry. Here's my hockey. Here's my park. So park. this is an ice hockey rink size. <laughs> we have <laughs> with bathrooms, Great locker time. rooms. I'm not sure if there's concessions in there or not. It's been a little while. Stands? Inside? Yes. Yes. So 
Um, this is an in, inside the hockey ring. Now, a field house could get as big as this, yeah. should you really want one. But I think the, the, the committee doesn't recommend that. <laughs> um, so, so to the point of the two general locations, here or here, um, a building in this location, some of the major considerations is how are you accessing and surveying it and bring utilities to it. You know, we have very small, barely two two way access up to the gravel lots. You would have to be able to service this building. So that access would have to be seriously rethought and get utilities up to the building. The idea of having a building that straddles um, this, this I'm a landscape architect, so this is a little bit of my hat coming on. Uh, the you build having to now? having to Yes, <laughs> having two building masses here facing each other with back a house behind it then makes a little sense of this is front door, this is back door, this is front door, which right now is a struggle in wayfinding a bit on the site in my humble opinion. Um, and this also has good building mass to your circulation. Um, so however, what Mary was talking about with the stormwater is that the assumption was made and even discussing it with the committee that there have been solutions before to um, put underground storage for the stormwater or to build a deck over, such as what has just been done over by Rite Aid in town. Um, so it does not come without a cost and that those mitigation me measures would still need to be accommodated if any of these were pursued. So both of these general locations come with their own challenges. So I think that the issue is, right, there's two potential buildings here that had a fair amount of interest. The indoor ice rink, for a lot of reasons, our students are going on campus, they're skating at five o'clock in the morning, it's all kind of crazy. We did, and we actually tried to look at activities that students were going off campus for to see what there was to bring back. Um, but the field house, um, there were any number of suggestions that could go into a field house, everything from like trampolines for cross training, you know? Um, to squash courts, you know, obviously locker rooms, indoor track, potentially all kinds of activities. If you can imagine a good sized field house, it doesn't necessarily preclude an ice rink. Doesn't necessarily preclude an indoor field house space. I mean, it's not ideal, probably, but many ice rinks broken down oh. are have indoor tennis courts or indoor space, practice space, or that kind of thing. So yeah. you could potentially Maybe that's merge a, a little bit, kind of thing. Yeah. you know, a little bit of the two. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I, I know many ice rinks that are also so indoor space. Indoor ice rink, off season. Space, and then these are other amenities. <coughs> just so, so you can play with this, and I will leave this all for you all. Mm -hmm. You can play with that footprint right to your point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was there any it's discussion about uh, uh, the tennis floor squash? A bubble? Things, over some kind of like, about yeah. 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 a bubble over yeah. something yeah. like the tracks yes. so that you could use the space in the winter. So we did have some healthy discussion about bubbles and, and pretty much eliminated them. Um, basketball, not sure. So I'm not an expert on bubbles, but I'm told that they um, can collapse very quickly. It's very hard to get insurance if you've got a bubble um, because of the danger of them collapsing. Um, very expensive to maintain. So we, we kind of set that aside pretty quickly, given our weather. Other questions on this? And we can come back later once we get through them, but anything here now? Only, I'm curious in, in terms of thinking so far, just what we've heard so far, a track, a field house, a hockey rink. What was the, I guess, depth and or breadth of uh, voice and desire that you heard for each of these. I mean, what are people clamoring for? You know, was it, did you hear a lot for the Depends track? Depends on you, Ron, or you ice skating. <laughs> well, no, we tried true. to be very, But you, um, was there kind of a critical mass of one over the other? I'm just looking for well, kind of we, so we did look at the sheer numbers of students on teams. Yeah. Right? And, and track wins out on that. Okay. And that counts. Um, it, I mean, everybody's got their Everybody Priority. has their interests, and, and we, yeah. What we really tried to do was listen to them yeah. and, and gather sort of the numbers. We, we actually um, 
had a list of the various teams and the number of students on each. Yep. But, um, but to be clear, we didn't do a survey. Right. Yep. Right. It's just no, curious, it's if, you know, kind of through the the forums and that kind of there stuff. If you had a feel for what was coming up, not that ground, it's going to define the answer. There's but. a groundswell of support for a track. Okay. And that's, and there's, that's there's, there's another very active group that's interested in, in ice cream. In right. ice cream. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and they just, the numbers might not be there just because of the population. Right, right. Well, that's what I was saying. The ice cream can be more than an ice rink. Right. The yes. ice rinks I've so seen that, that are broken down and become four tennis courts in the winter yes. or spring so or rainy season. days or you know, lacrosse practice or that's things. a good point because we did talk about middle sex schools so kids yeah. said they took the SATs on the hockey rink at middle sex right. because they cover it over and use it. but I, I thought but you're talking about also using having a big enough building that you could have an active ice rink and let's say tennis courts well to, to middle sex <coughs> to middle sex it, it's it's a rink but it's broken down and put away and used as an indoor space all the other seasons so okay. fall and spring and summer and it's from there, you can put four tennis courts in, they put up the nets, or they had a makeshift theater in there because they were right. doing renovate. So I'm saying it doesn't, you can all, you can, you can start to maybe multi-purpose a rink, so it's not just a rink, which is a you know, pretty small population probably. Good point. Yep. That's all I'm saying. Um, one thing I just wanted to add, um, not that we need to do everything the surrounding districts do that we more or less compete with, but um, Someone sent in a list of how many high schools have their own track, and it was, you know, like 92 percent or something. Some right. very large number, mm -hmm. and the opposite with an ice hockey rink. It's, you know, it's 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 a structure that needs to be supported by more than just a high school team. You know, because you got to run these and make them profitable mm -hmm. over many hours during the day. You know, it can be done, of course, but it's it's a different project. You know, and it's mm -hmm. it's obviously more expensive and so forth. So. Mm -hmm. Just a quick clarification question. Um, there was there any pricing at all and cost estimates at all? Or? Um, so in the track we had um, um, Steve Lane had gotten some estimates. I think it was like one point two to one point seven for the track. I think that's million. Right. Yep. yep. Um, Gosh, it's low. It's you know, they had gone to somebody that does actually, so that's that's probably the, I think that's the only concrete number we have, and, and it could cost in any of these. Uh, you know, my gut tells me it, it costs more to put up a building that's a height, an ice rink slash field house than a, a track, but. Especially in fact, you can't actually go on land unless you are going to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. I'll let you continue. <laughs> so. These get easier as you go on. So the outdoor learning comments, which is actually kind of nice. Um, Bob and I went to Rivers and Revolutions classroom a week or so ago to hear some of their design ideas. The, the students have um, gone out and surveyed a lot of teachers and gotten feedback of what would you use an outdoor classroom for. Um, some really unique, like every subject matter would found unique ways to use an outdoor space, whether it's a garden or just being outdoors. And, you know, writing poetry about the trees or what have you. Um, but the idea is that this, this could, I mean, we've got this little space because it can be a, a pretty small footprint in the scheme of things. It could go in really any number of places on the campus, I won't say any number, but, but more places on the campus because it does have a small footprint. But this is ideally where the Rivers and Revolution students, kind of that general neighborhood, we're looking to locate it. Um, They've done some interesting work on greenhouses and just, you know, made some really interesting parts. Frank, do you want to say anything about that? Yeah, I think uh, uh, there's a couple of locations about potentially. One is right next to CCTV as well. That's yep. kind of the blank canvas at the moment. And I must say that I am intrigued by the idea of greenhouse and yeah. the, the kids that do quite a bit of work there. And I yeah. think it's something worth considering. Um, but I think you can, the outdoor classroom, um, I think would be utilized by a lot. I am also, again, intrigued by that. That spot right next to CCTV, I think yeah. that it's very Can accessible. You point where that is. <coughs> so it's also not a. This isn't a big ticket item, so to speak. I mean, you know, you might have like a, little, a small here. structure. The kids have actually. The students have. Um, they have. If you go to the classroom, they they built a, a bench out of pallets. From I guess they all worked at um, Hotel Table and they got the pallets, the wood from the pallets, and they built a bench. 
it's just, you know, they're being very creative using minimal funds to and make an interesting space. They also mentioned a community garden, you know, yes. in that discussion, and I, I think that resonated with me also. They were, you know, you, I figured there'd be one or two or three kids interested in that kind of thing, oh, no. you know, but they were like, how many, 15, 18, 20? They work now on some of the farms in Concord. We have right. many farms yeah. here in town. Yeah. And, and uh, the interest is in connecting with adults too, right. because, you know, these kids are going to graduate, right? And, and how to perpetuate that, um, that kind of a garden. So I should say that the next, so, uh, before you go on, this was about this, unless it's about yeah, yeah. Um, but I, in, I just Before you go on to the next one, yeah. um, I personally, I should, I'll admit my bias, that I love the idea of anything connecting students to the outdoors. Um, and I've heard a lot of that from parents and people in the community, actually, also, um, and would love to see more of us connecting to the outdoors. And so my question is even if we did, if there was something like this that's a relatively limited use and limited footprint that's really an outdoor classroom, uh, yes, Pass it are, there, uh, are there opportunities to then expand that yeah. to more connections to the outdoors for all students, not just the ones interested in yeah. greenhouses and farming, but just creating more connections to the outdoors and that's what, But that's what the Rivers and Revolution students did, is they went and talked to all kinds of teachers. Right, so it sounds say, like What would like you that. do if you could take right. your classroom outdoors for the day or, yeah. or an hour? Okay. And so it, they yeah. were all over the place. So, it was, so yeah. even with that small space, it would be a, yeah. it would be a start for everybody. It's yeah. all through yeah. the strategic planning data, too, that we gathered from yeah. staff right. and kids. So it's yeah. going to show up in that. The plan worked correctly. Right, right. So we That's built true. one at Alcott ten years ago or something, eight years ago, which could be a prototype of something to consider, mm -hmm. see how well that something like that works. But because mm -hmm. um, it does, it, it depends a lot. If you're doing pallet benches or you're doing you know stone yeah. right. theater like right. stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. it could be a broad range. Yep. Right. I think we're going to go with the ladder, actually. Um, <laughs> the yeah. Not the pallets? <laughs> uh, no, I think we, uh, the pallets are a nice idea, but I think maybe it's something a little more substantial and yeah. permanent. Uh, what, what, aesthetically pleasing, perhaps. Yeah. My, <laughs> my personal, I, I don't want us to put stuff out there that's just going to rot and look mm -hmm. right. yeah. Yeah. Okay. the look of the campus, you know, after you know, one winter. This is going to toss around, too, because it could also be you know, something like the flower garden, maybe a sundial in there. Yeah. Maybe incorporates other classrooms with a lot of other. That gathering space? Yeah. Really? yeah. Mm -hmm. Clark. Does an outdoor learning common solve any current problem with ad hoc use of outdoor spaces that could be bettered by something like this? Uh, I'm not so sure I understand the question. Are people going outdoors right now in a makeshift way to take advantage of the campus? Yeah, and I mean, I think that's fair to say. Obviously, there's. Um, with a lot of science classes, we have opportunities with a sleep project or yeah. uh, and I go over to go outside uh, quite a bit. Um, I think some so, of the English classes are going outside yeah. for inspiration. Yeah, I mean, you, you do okay. see classes, especially when the weather gets nice, obviously, to, to explore a little bit. So I do it with hands. Um, one thing I want to say here is, is these next couple, they kind of, they could tie together, they could be separate projects. They're, they're very closely related. And the next one is, is a pavilion, which you'll see it's in the same spot. <laughs> um, and the pavilion, so we had a suggestion for a pavilion that was rather elaborate, um, kind of a big structure that could hold, you know, 100, 200 people for an event, um, you know, covered up over a rooftop at no size. Um, there could also be just sort of a smaller pavilion type, smaller structure that might hold 20 kids or 30 kids for classroom. Um, the idea of the larger one would be we could rent it out for um, events, that kind of thing. It could be revenue generating. Questions on that? And, um, so how, well, how is it different from the outdoor classroom size. other than a roof? Really size. No, 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 okay, no. so a roof oh, and oh. size. So, so potentially. The outdoor classroom could have a pavilion structure like right. let's say a small pavilion structure okay. associated with it yeah so don't think of an outdoor classroom as like an open field think right. of it as having different features and one of them would be a pavilion okay. could be a pavilion yeah okay or you could take up a whole lot of space and build a big pavilion or a huge pavilion got it okay so those two could overlap in various ways and it would be a different use than the amphitheater 
Um, because it's in, well, I won't it's say enclosed, because it's covered. Yeah. I do want that. It's beautiful. And so the last one is a garden with a greenhouse. And this, this is a more substantial um, structure, if you will, and was considered separate. I mean, there were people that submitted this idea separate from the Rivers and Revolutions outdoor classroom. It's not to say they couldn't somehow come together. But this was a more substantial greenhouse facility. Um, um, and I forget the name of the weeds. There's a weeds club at the high school. Weeds and seeds. That was, oh, I, that was just weeds, but apparently seeds. So um, you know, they're looking for gardening space. Um, so is it is it is the garden slash greenhouse idea a student generated idea? Um, Indirectly, well, some students, yes, but we had teachers submit it. Teachers? Um, on behalf of the Leeds and Seeds Club. We need so to have, um, you know, there's definitely student interest, but Peter Nickel, I think, who's is one as a staff member, is also very interested. I wonder if your question's getting at maybe sustainability, too. Mm -hmm. um, so there definitely are some staff that are interested, and I do think there'd be some opportunities to incorporate students in our pathways program and perhaps even bring. There's a lot of gardening happens in the summer. Yeah. yeah. A lot of weeding happens in the summer. And if yeah. it's not done, you get to the fall. I think that the, the grand vision for something. I'm just like being, this. I don't mean to be a downer about it. I love the concept. It's just a legitimate but, uh, question. And we also discussed. I mean, I think something of this size, but it's not just a little um, uh, you know, space on the side, would, would require <coughs> staff mm -hmm. year round. Yeah. Right. And I think the other thing that uh, we discussed was that the garden, it, it's gardens and greenhouses, which extends <coughs> and begins the life of the garden really mm -hmm. by February, mm -hmm. um, if not sooner, so that it becomes a, a more during the school year uh, use mm -hmm. as well. One more thing about the greenhouse is if I recall the weeds group actually has a little bit of money yes. maybe from somehow it's associated with thrifty. I forget the I forget the exact exact way, but somehow that money is associated in that context. Mm -hmm. And um, so there is a funding source. Uh, and then I think also and it's very anecdotal, but I do think there's a shift, a little bit of a shift in the student population of students going to college and, and studying more agricultural based and then going into farming. I think there's some movement in that direction. I mean, it may be very small numbers, but there is a connection there. And we discussed in our meetings, well, what do you do about the summer? Like, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, so I don't know if you know an answer to that. But. Mm -hmm. We have some residents who are pretty heavily involved in greenhouses and hydroponics as well, right. who have shown the interest in public things. So I'm done. We're done. Questions? Could you, could you come back just for a moment, Mary, and sure. talk about the skate park? Um, <laughs> because I wouldn't want that to get lost in the conversation. Sure. Um, it was a considerable amount of community money that brought that in. I don't know if a lot of people use it, but I imagine that those few that do consider it precious um, and maybe didn't have a voice in this process because it was already there, so it wasn't new use talk. Um, was there any consideration to how to yes. save it or not save it? Um, there was a lot of consideration given to it. So to your point, you know, if we build the eight lane track, will the skateboard park still fit there? Um, I will say there's a lot of um, a disagreement in terms of how well it is used, yeah. and certainly how well it's used by high school students. Because I came out of a meeting where I was told, no one ever uses that. I drove out of the parking lot, and there was a gang of kids there with their parents skateboarding. So, but it's, um, I think it's an important community resource. And if we, I think, any project has to take it into consideration, whether it's moved, whether we design around it, what have you. Um, but I think we really do need to figure out how well used it is. And, and is, there, is there a contingency to, to fight to keep it? Because I'm hearing very conflicting messages about that. 
and it is a fairly portable. Could you say you're having it? Yes, but, <laughs> but volunteers built it. Volunteers, I saw Yes, I know you yeah. did, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is salvageable. I, I don't, even go, I, I don't use my there. skateboard yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, you bring up a very important point. We, we did talk a fair amount about it, but it was kind of, what can we do? We don't yeah. know how well it's used. And, um, and we might see, we might see uh, folks from the town side uh, be interested in cooperating yeah. with some solution too. Um, do you have a comment on that? Just from my perspective as a high school student, I think we talked from the committee a lot about how it's sort of more of a middle school um, group of people that are using it, and you know, like you said, it is uh, reasonably portable. So I mean, in my personal opinion, and I know we talked a little bit about this on the committee, uh, I think it would be more well used uh, at one of the middle schools than at the high school. Um, I, I don't really know of a lot of high schoolers who use it. Just think. One other comment that we'd be remiss not pointing out is that the pavement of the skate park is part of the permanent solution on the path. So just the pavement part. Another question as it relates to outdoors. Sorry, I'm back on that theme. Um, did anything ever come out from, well, really from the athletic department or anybody in, in that area with interest on other out, kind of outdoor physical activity things like project adventure type, you know, climbing group project, um, whether it be ropes, no obstacle type well, nothing came up like that. Oh, sorry. One, yeah. not quite like that, but one uh, request uh, we got late in the game was for frisbee because we do have the high school oh, oh, has a frisbee. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not rock climbing and all the rest of it. But right, yeah. it it's something that's outdoors and needs a, a frisbee, needs a field. an ultimate frisbee field. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I think they could they play on the cap? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So they could come back. I mean, and it was, not that it was uh, debated much at, at the committee, but I mean, we talked about the potential outdoor basketball court. Um, what's the other? It's not very helpful with the other one. Field hockey? No. Paddle tennis. Paddle tennis, thank you. So that's on the drop from consideration. <laughs> well, she, yeah. It's discussed. <laughs> yeah, no, it's no, so no. Yep. There, there were a lot of ideas discussed. You'll see them in the report. Yeah, but, yeah. But, yeah um, I saw them. And a lot of really interesting ones. Yeah, exactly. But no, it, I don't remember hearing anything, and, and I would have written it down, about climbing or sort of obstacle course ropes, anything like right. that. Okay. Knowing a little bit about that, too, that I think the insurance is quite expensive. Ah, uh, yes. So, so the, the question for this committee is now what? Mm -hmm. right. What do we right. want to do? Well, first of all, thank first, you. Can it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank all these people. This I mean, is an incredible this amount is of work. Yeah. And, uh, a lot really well articulated over, obviously, a lot of hours and hard work and effort. Um, that's, this is impressive and incredibly helpful. Um, so thank you to all of you who spent all those hours and time and energy. and extra time making um, things that would be helpful to visualize um, and Mary and Bob for taking all the time. This is this is a great place for us to be now to discuss some stuff. It's awesome. Yeah, and there are some people that obviously I'm here and yeah. you know, Kat Bain that did a tremendous amount of work so she deserves a lot of the credit. John also was a big part of the community as a coach here. Um, yeah. And Mary kept us honest. Mary <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> no. It was it was a great committee to work with. Thank you. Committee. Yes, Absolutely. thank you. I'm amazed um, at the clear answers and recommendations that you've gotten to from all that information. So I, I think the so uh, they all take money. So right. so which we don't have today. So frisbee's free. So frisbee's free. Frisbee's free. That's good. That's Let's right. do it. Bring the frisbee back. So and and. Um, <laughs> You know, some of these things, like maybe some of the um, outdoor classroom initiatives we want to say go go forth and, and let Mike take that on, you know, to allocate some space. I mean, what, I mean what it seems to, to me like we need to take, 
the, and I'll just use the phrase, those that have floated to the top, right, the top priorities, even though we haven't ranked them, but define top priorities and do somewhat of a feasibility study on each one that now feasibility study might be small, smaller or larger depending on the project, but get some details and estimates on things that we really want and start to figure out if it's feasible, right? And, and then compare those to figure out timeline. But that's, that's another, you know, that's now another charge that we're talking about. Yeah, I think um, trying to do a feasible st feasibility study on all of these would be an enormous Right, task. so that's why I'm saying, we, you know, kind of, because even to take even to drill down, down on an outdoor classroom would take considerable work. Because you, you know, even designing and, and you know what products and how big and accommodate what. And well, you, let's say, oh, we like the outdoor classroom idea, but maybe a year from now we want to put up a track. So how do we make sure the outdoor classroom mm -hmm. doesn't mm -hmm. impact that? Or you know, those right. are just two examples. Mm -hmm. but and how specific. do we manage all of those, or do we drop? Some of them. Well, the CCTV space. <coughs> it's outside the. Yeah. So I, I guess the question I have is, you know, what what would the school committee feel is the best steps going forward on this? Um, you know, we have some great ideas. They all need much more work. Uh, there's funding involved and, and placement and, and and so forth and. So we got to decide, you know, uh, preferably uh, in the short term, you know, next month or two, what what our steps should be going forward. So I'm very interested to hear, you know, some of the opinions on that. So, and I think that's what I was getting to when I see feasibility study. I know mm -hmm. that's big and down mm -hmm. the line, but first we need to define priorities. Yeah. And, and I think define priorities of desirability, and then also in a separate column ease of getting there. I mean, which are the low-hanging fruit and which are the big projects, right? I mean, it's not necessarily outdoor classroom versus track, because those are two concepts that are very different scale. So I feel like we need to kind of give each a priority ranking, maybe, and then a, an ease ranking or feasibility ranking, so to speak, just to pull out those low-hanging fruit and figure out which bigger projects, if any, we want to pursue. I'm thinking about we've, this work has been done now and a number of things have been identified and um, I would think it's up to us at this point to zero in on some things and you know I mean obviously a feasibility study of the track is is not is non trivial and that's something that we have to decide how we would fund um, and uh, but I also, I, I would, I'd like to have some input from um, the central and the high school administration, now that we have this, um, on of the things that have been identified um, from, a, from an educational standpoint and an extracurricular standpoint, um, in the way they're thinking about what's going on what their priorities might be out of that group of things mm -hmm. to guide us a little more. Yeah. And then and then we decide, I don't know if we just have a conversation at a school committee meeting about this, or if it's something that needs some sort of a small subcommittee to do a little exploration um, <clears throat> into some details of, you know, what you know, what would you have to do to figure out if you were going to do this, um, so it's sort of that one step depth beyond what this committee did, just to get some ideas to come back, so we can have something to talk about. Yeah. Definitely, the prioritizing shouldn't be just us. We need administration, and maybe on some of this public input again. You know, it might. Well, we can come back around to that. I think right. as we zero in on something, but yeah. you know, I mean, the model of of the advisory committee concept is, is a real good one as far as I'm concerned because it takes a lot of work out of the hands of the seven members of the regional school committee. So I'm personally very much in favor of advisory committees <coughs> in general and I think this is a 
an excellent example where we should have one going forward. You know, whether we, you know, change the charge that is now in place for this current committee or whether we create a new committee, I suppose that can be discussed. But I, I think there's work to be done even before the beginning of the summer. And if we have a, an advisory committee in place very shortly, uh, it's just going to help everything all, all the way around because some of these things are going to cost money and some will end up at town meeting. And so if we, you know, wait till the fall here, uh, we've got a month or two to get something in a town meeting. It, it's, it's not as likely as if we do maybe a little bit of the groundwork right now and then by the end of the summer sort of have a more crystallized idea what, what the, uh, the best way forward is. And then obviously the school committee will have to decide. What do, what do um, people think of, I like uh, Wally's suggestion of getting a little more feedback from people who are actually in the building and manage the people in the building and sort of uh, kind of how we might prioritize with, with that alignment. Since we haven't talked about it yet, I'm going to let Mike go first. So we and I, don't don't know, each other. I, I also I appreciate that this is like, you know, we all just learned too. I'm not ready to jump in with my priorities. Well, I mean, we've next obviously year. had a lot of time to be part of this process. Right. I'm sure we have opinions. I just don't know if they're the same. <laughs> um, yes, you, you want to know what my priorities no, are? No, no, I was asking actually what you thought of this committee thought and, and generally people that are here, part of the administration, thought about having a subsequent conversation to tonight. With here, here I'm looking at parking, track, building, rink, field house, big ones, and then outdoor classroom slash pavilion and garden. Yeah. And maybe some now take those a little bit just of you guys at the, the educational epicenter of the campus and say, we should get an outdoor classroom ASAP. That would be my top priority. Or I know parking's a big one, and, and that, that might need to be taken till I think, life. Um, that's, I'm speaking for myself, but like that's a whole other sort of pressure point that doesn't. It could be a different discussion. It could be a different discussion. It's yeah. not. It's not nearly as fun and as exciting as the others for educational purposes. But we do have kids who are affected by our parking stress and families. So maybe that's taken off as a separate conversation. And you know, I'm just trying to sort of get, wrap our heads around what next. And and some of it depends, I think, about what you said, which is. Here are things that really seem to resonate with the teachers and the kids that would be maybe the smaller things, but in terms of the bigger things, you know, mm -hmm. the track trumps the indoor space or, right. I mean, it's a little bit more defined than tonight. I'm just yeah. throwing that out there as a way to I agree. That's exactly what I was trying to lead to is we need to start to prioritize, yeah. you know, narrow it down. And I think input to do that would be very helpful. Yeah, I think, you know, I'm, I'm only about one person, but I, I feel strong that I can speak for um, a healthy portion of the high school, but you know we we, we definitely have our priority list, and um, you know when you consider all the limitations of the area, and there was a lot of great proposals, and I think we can incorporate several of these. But you know I think the parking and the track are would be the top priorities in my humble opinion, because the track is not simply just a track; it does provide a field in the middle that would be conducive not only to um, some of the track uh, throwing um, events. But also might accommodate, uh, you know, a pretty large contingent of kids who are playing frisbee, ultimate frisbee. Um, and I think if you did a, a six-lane track, you could add additional um, healthy amount of parking, and you know maybe you can incorporate an outdoor classroom there too. So, yeah, I know that's I just but the, know, but the but the yeah. track is. Um, it sounds like to me the eight-lane track is going to really well. It's a great thing to host and. And really great for practices is going to really press our parking issues. See, yeah, I think yeah, that's where the feasibility. Because it takes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. <coughs> we need to study that. Yeah. So I, I think. Oh, sorry. Good. So Mike and I think are in agreement. I guess the one thing that sort of jogs up, I went some of those classroom kind of outdoor spaces seem a lot lower scale, and part of me wonders if we couldn't work on some of those. <coughs> the track and the parking is a couple years probably, to, you know, by the time you get to get to secure the funding and build, could we have done some of the smaller scale uh, classroom based pieces in the meantime? That's an awful lot to keep afloat all at once and part of me wonders if you need a, you know, almost a building committee that's going to just focus on getting a track secured, funded and built and oversight of it and all of that, while as maybe the other 
could be under an advisory council. I, to see how this group works so effectively, I don't know how many projects you can take on in a group of this mm. kind where we come back together. There were a lot of people doing an awful lot of homework between meetings, and we need that same drive and commitment that um, for each project almost. So that that structure may or may not support very specific efforts. I, I think it's more of a building committee mode for a track construction. Mm -hmm. when, when we first started talking about the advisory committee, there was, you know, there was, obviously there was the landfill, which was the big sort of elephant in the room. But, you know, there's also, you know, the campus is new and it's um, got great elements and there's some, still some space that can be utilized for things like we've talked about tonight. And I do think that having uh, the advisory committee, whether it's, and, and rather than create a new one, maybe, you know, there's some function of, okay, the big, the big dog's off the table now. Yeah. And do we, you know, do some people want to say, okay, well, that was nice to participate, um, but, you know, I'm, I don't need to carry on going forward to, to work on the other things um, and have that advisory committee look at, I think, you know, be involved in some of the parking piece. Yeah. And, you know, we probably need a public forum on that at some point in time. Um, might be, you know, there's enough work involved in those pieces that uh, it would be good to have a committee who's working on it rather than it fall to us or just or to you. Um, so, you know, I'd be certainly amenable to keeping that intact or, or reinitializing it for another year. Um, I mean, but I do, and I do think that if we come, I think we need to come to some decision about a direction yeah. on that on yeah. the landfill yeah. land, yeah. based on what we've heard from yeah. this committee, um, and then and at that point we can say, let's think about, and ideally, if I would hope that if we came to some conclusion that let's say we wanted to put a track there that some people would step forward and say I would like to be involved mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the in the group that's going to make that happen. I'm quite sure that won't be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. No. Be bad yeah. Um, but you know they're not going to do that until they know that we've said right. that's, that's right. the direction we want to go. That's right. But that's sort of the CCA play equivalent for a track. Mm -hmm. That's very different from the campus advisory. It yes, is. that's right. my point. So we would carve that out, yeah. right. and you know, maybe not, I don't know that we'd use the same exact model, but um, I'm not sure. What, or I like a building I'm, committee, basically. Yeah. yeah. For a track. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm struggling with what this advisory committee continues to do, or or. Does. Well, I yeah. thought it done. It's done what it did. We're it done. It's charged to do. <laughs> so before, but so what? If we're going to have another advisory committee, what what are they actually doing? Well, I feel like the, because um, I think we need a new charge if we have that or whatever new, whatever new name even. I mean, we don't know what it is. And, but, you know, sort of to the point, like when you get a lot of information in our work, we often then take it away and digest and, mm -hmm. you know, revisit the next time. And mm -hmm. given this, which is awesome, and, you know, I just read the, yesterday afternoon, read the report. So it's a lot to digest and trying to parse out sort of an idea, you know, you're, I'm already thinking, you know, is this the parking separate or maybe the track and the, um, you know, is sort of the top runner, but we, outdoor learning, you know, would be awesome to get in the short term. And so maybe we, we spend some time, I know we don't want to, we've got very few meetings left, but between now and the next meeting, kind of synthesizing what, you know, our, our, our sort of own thoughts are about, you know, next steps and how to approach it. I, I think the committee charge were to be revised uh, necessarily goes to what would decision making look like once two or three of these proposals were put together because the committee did a brilliant job of looking at each one but we have to look at multiple and to do anything with one is to impact the potentials of the others so I think where we go now is looking at two or three and how those impact each other and what becomes then still feasible and what has to get dropped off with possibilities. And I think that's a school committee conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
I agree. In fact, I was just going to say the same thing. My it, kind of to answer your question, Mary, if an advisory committee continues, what do they do? That's how I see the role. Is some advisory committee that's still figuring out the big picture and and understanding. Okay, we have three potential projects at play here. Two, three, whatever the number is. Um, where are they each? How do they affect each other? Does the timing make sense? Is it all working so that we don't have potentially three different initiatives running off in three different directions not coordinating with each other? So I could see an advisory committee still owning kind of that overall campus development plan, so to speak, whatever we want to call it, and making sure that it all coordinates and makes sense. And then maybe have, and then having a separate group, particularly for something large like a track, if we're going to go forward with a track, a separate group that's driving that. Um, the other thing that I want to pull in, because it relates to that concept of the big picture and coordinating it all, is that timing-wise um, and investment-wise, we also need to keep in mind, and of course I'm the one to mention it, don't want to throw the water on the flames, but from a Concord funding perspective, we're also going to be looking at asking for funding at some time in the next few years for a really large building project for a middle school, right? So if we're starting to ask for even in the one to two million dollar range for a track, we just need to keep all of that in perspective and, and understand all the things in play. So, See, the, the, and the that's lighting. where- And the lighting, exactly. <laughs> that, that's a very good point. Um, that's why it may make sense to, uh, to look at a, uh, set up now that the, uh, the Community Preservation Committee uses. They, they have every year $1.4 million or so, and they look at seven or eight or nine different projects. While this wouldn't be nine, it would be three or four. And, uh, and, and you work with the, the groups that are proposing these different ideas. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, two or three of the advisory committee members could work on the track, and two or three could work on the community garden and the greenhouse and and parking, you know, and, and but nevertheless keep sort of an overall view of the campus because some of these things are somewhat competing with each other here and there. And, and I, I think the, the logistically the, the most efficient way to go forward uh, and get the most accomplished is to uh, to change the charge of the committee and uh, Ask some of the committee members that are now part of the larger committee if they want to continue, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have already a pool of people. And we still have the names of individuals that weren't picked in the original go round. And so, you know, we could, we could definitely find some interested people. Uh, I'm sure we find interested people. Are we at the point with the parking piece that um, we need to? carve that out and I think it seems to me we're, to, we're in pretty good agreement we need to do something yeah. and that now it's about you know we've identified spaces that are being consideration for some of this campus work and we should be sending these guys off to come back to us with some you know this is what we think is working and where it ought to be and because I think, you know, I hear Larry just said two years for some of these things. I think, you know, we can we can map out a time frame that we could have parking for fiscal year 20. Um, but we need to do it quickly. That's and, you know, quickly meaning if there's a special town meeting in the fall, we need to be there with an article yep. Yep. to fund it. Yep. And so I don't know that, so I, I'd like to, I, I'm going to propose that we carve that off from everything at this point and put it in the hands of the superintendent and finance director and the principal to come back to us with the plan. Yeah, we talked about that at the advisory committee and essentially thought that might be the direction we would go. The important factor was that the left and right hand continue to know what each other's doing, so whatever the parking plan is doesn't impact the or limit the ability for these other projects. And vice versa. And vice versa. I know that's a belief coming from me. I agree with that. I just said, I that makes sense what you suggest. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, 
Sounds to me. So, I mean, should we just great presentation? We've had a good discussion. Process a little bit. And let's yeah, yeah, yeah. let's come bit. back to this. But and next I do time think, we decide. I, I do think, and that if I mean, I'm just looking. We just talked about the compression of the calendar for us, <laughs> and Stop. the summer's coming. And I think if we're going to ask these guys to go do this, we should. And we, if we think we want them to do it, then we can sort of have a consensus around that tonight. We ought to, to, to start to work up a plan to come back to us to say this is yeah, how we right. want to proceed on the parking piece. Oh, the administration. Yeah. Okay. Carve that off at the other end. Yeah. yeah. And just, you know, so that that work can begin. Because I don't know if we've given, we so haven't given you that charge. Yeah, we'll get to it in a minute. We're working on, we're still trying to get some temporary parking in place. That's the current mm -hmm. discussion. But we can do both. You mean, uh, are, yeah. are you talking permanent? Well, you're talking more of a permanent yeah, solution. Right. Permanent. Our focus has been temporary, but right. we can do both at the both. same time. Right. Yeah. But obviously, we need to be thinking about the long term. Definitely. Oh. So I agree with that. Is that a general consensus that we're mm -hmm. asking them to do that? And then on the other front, are we are, are we deciding tonight whether we want to revise the charge of this? Committee or give it a new charge or create another committee, or we're kind of thinking about that and we'll discuss it next time. I'm just, I'm not sure what we're trying to get to I, tonight. You know, I I did a lot of the initial work on the charge that's now in place for the campus advisory group. Mm -hmm. Mary helped tremendously in the later stages, and Joanna also helped. Uh, what I could do for the next meeting is propose a change in the charge, take some of the paragraphs out that have to do with the report, obviously they're not pertinent anymore, and add a couple of others, and then maybe we could discuss that and see if, you know, the committee could, would be interested in proceeding this way. If not, then these individual projects we're gonna to have to take on as a, as a whole school committee, you know. I, I, and you and I disagree on no, this. No, I know. That, I, I, know. <laughs> I, just, I would love to see what you think the charge is because I just. No, I, okay. I, I'll work I, on I it. want it to be really. No, I want it to be specific because yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm sitting here and I just don't get if if I were going to be on that committee, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. Also, to that end, if someone's been on this committee, I wouldn't assume they want to continue. No, I wouldn't assume that at all. And uh, <laughs> I would also, you know, you, yeah, uh, might, they yeah, might, there might be some that are issued, but I think the charge yeah. is done and they did their work, which mm -hmm. is awesome, and it should be something that is. Yeah, this no, isn't no, like no, revamping into a new. Thing. This is a new. Right. I call but it I appreciate you taking the time to try and come up with a charge yeah, and figure yeah. out. It's, it's I like a, take off the parking as one of the. You know, let's take that on with through the administration. Yeah, no, that, that definitely makes sense. And then. Called something new. This could be the campus development committee instead. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole new. I mean, yeah. <laughs> right. when, when we set up the original <laughs> charge, um, you know, we we asked in the charge um, that uh, members should consider committing for a two-year period, and we also had a separate item in the charge saying that we would go back to the committee if we needed to uh, amend or change the uh, the charge. So it, it it's not. Yeah. Totally. I, I, I don't want to, the semantics, I'm not worried. It's, yeah. it's, what do we want this group of people to do? And whether it's no, no, tweaking I, this totally. or it just feels like know. something exactly. really different. Okay, I will, I will do some work on that and we'll talk about that. That'd be great. That'd, I think that would be really helpful. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Okay, so um, chair and liaisons reports, anybody? Ooh, well, that was all. Do Thank you. 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 Uh, any looks like she wants to say something. questions from the audience? Um, Could you? It, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what protocol is allowed to make a suggestion or to think about, um, but it's something to think about it towards trying to get any ideas that might want to be on town meetings timeline wise. Um, uh, I get a sense from the study that we did that a sort of feasibility master plan sketching costs wrangling for, let's call it East Campus area um, that sort of takes all those pieces and sort of on a habitat, 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 habitat that whole area, <laughs> excuse me, um, and push it 
to the level where you have a little bit more meat on the bones might help you make a decision about what to do with it next because it might not be a track project, it might be an East Campus project. And to think about it more holistically might be helpful. And if you would find me just a role this to offer pro bono my services to sit with a smaller committee and for a month or two to sketch and draw and estimate some, it puts me on the bones, I would just put that on. Excellent. That's Thank great. you, Kathleen. Yeah. Um, well, I would not be able to serve on the committee next year. No, 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 no. Wait, come on. But I, 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 I am pretty invested, uh, you know, in this project and stuff, and I would uh, definitely love to share, you know, outside once, you know, not on the committee, some of my personal opinions. Um, I, you know, would be able to talk at great length um, about, you know, uh, the track. Um, I, I do have, you know, some ideas about parking as well. Um, I, I don't know, but I would not be able to serve on the committee next year, but I am definitely interested in, you know, I would be able to electronically communicate uh, mm -hmm. next year, you know, email or Skype or something. Um, That's a great job. Thank, Thank you. Go ahead. Can I just say something? Um, just, um, Your name, please. I'm Sheila Flory. Oh. I'm a mother of two kids, and I sort of have the same question. Um, I just want to mention, um, for the, all the um, there's actually two teams of girls and boys. You couldn't actually have, they do daily practices all week. There's about a total of 40 kids. I think this year is a pretty low yield year for the team. Um, even, even adding a track to the high school could potentially improve their situation since right now they're bus to ride out. No bathrooms for the first month, no trainer, no way to get home on a late bus. Um, if they could end up at Emerson, it would be an improvement. If track wasn't there, maybe that's one field. They do need two fields. They compete separately. They bus in teams from you know other schools to compete. Sometimes they do co-ed. So anything to kind of improve that situation, right out. Kind of, they, it's worked for them in the past. You know, changing clothes in people's cars and getting rides home from seniors to Carlisle. But um, Emerson <coughs> would be better. Um, if the track takes a long time to go in that you're talking about, they would be happy to use that space until then. <laughs> Any flat piece of grass, they don't need anything else. Just, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? So now we go to chairs. Thank you all. Thank you all for being a part of that. Take a two minute break. All right.
Okay, the next uh, item on the agenda is um, chairs and liaisons reports. Uh, do we have I just any? Oh, no, you're all set. You're, <laughs> you're, you're good. Else? Anybody else? Uh, nothing? Okay. Um, oh, Bob, we were going to mention Harlem Lacrosse tonight. Oh, yeah, no, that's under correspondence. Oh, okay, great. So that's coming up. Yeah, I can work myself a note. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, you, your superintendent's report sure. is next. Sure, yeah. Um, so highlights of where we're at in different processes. Uh, strategic plan, we had a really productive session again last week, energized, we're taking the objectives and bringing them now to initiatives, which will be that underlay of um, action, early action planning, the concrete ones will happen at the finality of it, but it's amazing to me how synthesized and energized these groups have been. Um, cultural proficiency, this is probably the piece I wanted to talk with you the most on. In the implementation plan I provided you back in the winter, um, we had suggested that we would be looking at the evaluation rubric and beginning to talk with teachers on that in terms of what cultural proficiency means, as well as um, surveying stakeholders as to the effectiveness of the plan. I'd like to suggest that we might slow down a little bit on that for two reasons. One, we're proposing a year's worth of cultural proficiency professional development for teachers, so I think before we dive into the evaluation rubric, it makes sense to do the training, or at least some portion of the training, um, to maybe use that as a halfway point in the school year before we bring the rubric out. Um, and then in terms of the surveys, I just couldn't help but question if it made more sense to do that after the Jewish holidays in the fall, and really have that as a culminating point to see how successful we've been. We've certainly been working at this this spring through some of the other holidays that have come up, and even this month's um, holidays for some, but I just know that that's such a pivotal moment in time it might be very helpful data to us to see how effective we were in a spot in the year where we've actually struggled in the past. So um, so those are two things I wanted to just get feedback on, um, not because we haven't kept up with the plan, but because it started to feel like there was a purposeful way, reason to, to not do a few pieces of this. Um, so I don't want to talk on that now, but that was that was my hope was to dialogue with you. That makes perfect sense to me. Makes more sense to gather the data at a time when <coughs> there's useful data together. Me too. <laughs> I agree. And also have some more professional development. Yes, I think that's what everybody. really, we've learned a lot more as yeah. the year has gone on about how much more we have to learn. So yeah. before we base it on the rubric and diet to an evaluation process, let's be sure we all yeah. understand and the training more. First, oh. Absolutely. I was happy to hear you talk about other holidays. Yeah, absolutely. So when I saw this, I would, it, I said, so any, any, any. For example, we like know we have kids culture. fasting in the next weeks yeah. here, and we're trying to be much All more cognizant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Great. Thank you. Mindfulness is moving forward. Um, we're looking at building level plans that will have an overarching district-wide plan. Uh, we'll hear back from hopefully the education fund in the next two weeks to understand what materials they may or may not fund. We've tweaked that grant to support Open Circle and advisory materials for the advisory program. And from our seat, um, Kristen's in my head because she's talked a lot about ensuring there's some equity of this mindfulness work, um, making sure that all kids are exposed to a certain amount, even though some will get more than others, but making sure there's a baseline and that's become become the goal. Um, the teachers are highly energized. We're surveying them now to really capture who's doing what and um, building based committee work and really growing more um, systemic work through organize, organized building discussions that then flow up flow up to the district discussion. So we'll have that all tightly packaged up before the year's mm -hmm. out. Um, communication and collaboration. I have been out in the school a lot the last couple of weeks. I met with the Concord Sustainable Energy Committee last week to talk on the parking concerns and share some of why we are where we are and help them hear that we completely supported all of their their hopes and goals for the community and that the timing was part of the issue. We've got an urgent need that we want to talk more. Xander's such a great example. He wrote the he wrote the advisory council an incredible epiphany after we talked about parking and the kids need to be part of the solution. That's yeah. becoming so clear. Um, that we need to talk with them as well in terms of some of, some of those sustainable mindsets. Uh, response to intervention, we, through Mike's 
uh, team, they've looked at a tool for social emotional data gathering at McLean Hospital that we're really excited about. So we're looking at implementing um, at least a pilot of that potentially in the fall, as well as the academic components um, at the middle and high school and strengthening all of that data. So more to come, but a lot of great energy going on there. Hopefully you saw the dumpster in the mm -hmm. parking lot to work on cleaning out the space for the steam lab. So we're getting started and that's all really exciting. So hopefully we'll have updates. Maybe there's a field trip down the road here. We can walk down the hall later. <laughs> when is the out. completion date on that? The beginning of school is the completion date no matter There you go. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> right, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. um, really excited about our new MEDCO director, Andrew Nymacek. Oh, he's gonna help me practice that so I get it right. That's, that's what I last understood. Um, he's coming out of Hingham, um, brings this incredible expertise. I mean, he just was all that we wrote into the job description with the culture of proficiency and the student work and the community building <laughs> with the parents and the cultural work across it. We're all just so excited. And every call I made to Hingham, no one could find anything, anything even remotely for him to work on. So <laughs> he's uh, just feeling like a gift for us. So. Could we invite him to one of our meetings? We could, sure. Yeah. yeah. We just signed. Good, yeah. We're still finishing his contract. No, I'm, that. Yeah. No, no, I'm, just, <laughs> yeah. I'm just. I think he'd be glad to come. That's yeah. great. And uh, all those transitions happen July one. Also, yeah. So yeah. that one's a little Maybe. bit different because Barry Haley is retiring August first. Oh, okay. So we've actually offered Andrew a contract for August first because that would allow Aaron to finish as Metco director for the month of July. Mm -hmm. And that way, it was budget friendly to not have duplicity in the roles and pay two people for the same job. So, Aaron is MECO director till August 1st and will take over from Barry then. And that meant Andrew is going to start August 1st. It worked out very well for him, I think, because of how he is set up with Hingham. He gets to have the month of July and be in good shape. Wow, and that's great. It seems to have all fallen together very nicely. Good. Um, probably the other greatest momentum that's happening um, really from the ground up here through the teachers and the building level administrators is the special education uh, work that we're doing. We don't even have the report back for the K-8 group yet, and yet just the discussions that happened around it have started some reorganization uh, pieces. I attended with Mike and the uh, high school staff another session they had on Friday afternoon to look at their plans for reorganizing and they're so they're being so thorough and thoughtful um, and specific that because we're building programs around kids we're gonna we're gonna be able to really streamline how our services are provided and the, the common goal which I think you heard when Mike was here is now across all of the schools and that uh, looking towards a service delivery model that's more focused on professional delivery rather than the use of uh, some of our tutor staff, um, not to in any way diminish them, but to really help our case managers work directly with those kids that they service and um, provide a more specialized service. So there's just such great energy there. Um, it's really exciting, really that's exciting. Great. So that's, what I, that's what I bring up. All right, we got one email in terms of correspondence. Um, Expressing thanks to the lacrosse teams, coaches, and parents from Lincoln Sudbury and Concord Carlisle. They traveled to Dorchester to extend uh, this very long rivalry between the two teams. What, what's the guess? Uh, how many years this rivalry has been going on? Trivia question. LS? LSCC lacrosse. 25 years. Ah. Uh, not even close. <laughs> 48. You were good. 48 years. That's pretty good. And this was part of a larger Harlem lacrosse event where, you know, they travel up here. And this thing has been growing, like, extremely well. I mean, you, you know more about it than mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah they so. take, they, they, they go into school some, and they teach them about lacrosse. They're the, the, the lowest, you know, they're most needy schools and lowest mm. economic like they're 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 particularly needy and they align with great principals who allow for them to bring in and get these kids involved in lacrosse, usually middle school, and they get really excited and it really um, improves their grades, it improves their outlook, it improves all kinds of things in the kids and in the, the, the programs. They and they do equal boys and girls programs and yeah, it's How really many cities are there right now? Gosh, uh, 
I mean, I went to the high school lower fields where they were playing a year ago, and they were, oh, that's right, I recall them. And there were five to six hundred athletes there. Wow. Which, I mean, that is something. Anyways. Yeah. But just um, a reminder, um, Simon Cataldo, a CC alum, mm -hmm. is a founder of the oh, that's right. and, yes, a, yes, and yes. a great ambassador for our school. Mm -hmm. He's really impressive. So, great program. Okay, reports for discussion. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, draft RFP for legal services. So, uh, in the packet, we provided you. We solicited through MASBO, the Business Administrators Organization, a template, as well as a sample from another district. Um, Melissa, in her uh, support to this committee, has already tweaked a little bit. Um, so this is, this is the framework that typically these are structured under. Um, we're open and interested in feedback and what your next steps would like to be. Yes, it probably still needs another passage. Yeah, the first paragraph isn't um, yeah. tailored. I like the second request better than the first. Of the <coughs> is, that, is that two? So the way this was crafted, also correct me if I'm wrong. This I is like a cover letter to the yeah. rest. Oh, okay. Cover okay, sheet. okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. <coughs> I thought these were two choices. Or no, two. they're meant to be a package. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, there's plenty of words nothing to do here, but I tend right. to focus on substance. Yes, I would agree. So, so this is this is one law firm to kind of do it all. And well, I, I thought about that. I think yeah. the way it's worded, it's all and or. I think there's somewhere in there that it's, maybe it didn't get in here, but okay. I might have been in the other one. But. And so we are open, or I guess it depends. Would depend on the responses whether we, right now we have a special ed firm and then everything else, well, bound council and then everything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, Agreed. that makes sense at some point. And I think it should, it still yeah. Still yeah. Sense. It should be clearly either, you know, all yeah. or part. Right, right. All, all or some make sure the wording. Yeah. Right. And that's what that we want. You, I think you always want to have the ability to draw on a specialty firm if you need it, mm -hmm. which, which you would, but you wouldn't want to have anything in a RFP or a contract that would preclude you from doing that in the future. Sure. And basically, if we word it as, <coughs> excuse me, all or part of these services, we could conceivably hire someone for all of them and not have three different providers anymore, or we could do it the same way or break it up differently, right? But that gives us options, which I think is what we're looking for. It's just information. I think so. I'd like to see those choices. Yeah, where it's going to matter is um, in pricing <coughs> and, and any kind of. Number four on submission requirements. Proposals. Gets into the either or. Each proposal must specify in detail the services to be provided, and for each service, the method by which they have been charged. Yep. So my question is, are we looking for one firm to do it all? I don't think we need to decide that right okay. now. We're looking for options. Looking for... Okay. Well, that's why the wording has to be best. and or so that yeah. right. Mm -hmm. okay. we can get a yeah. broader range. Right. So, yeah. so my Probably only concern is on a couple of these under scope of services, for instance, number one says consultation on all personnel, labor relations, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it doesn't, it makes it sound like we just want one for all of those. Well, we don't even do that now. Uh, it's not right. unusual for us in situations, uh, if, if there's an MCAD issue, we will use the counsel that's provided for us by our insurance company often. But there's usually a little bit of liaison work between Robes and Gray in this instance and that. It's very good. Right, so you're in charge. What you use and what you don't. Right, right. And yep. it's only going to come into play in someone saying, you know, and, and we'll charge X, you know, if they're proposing a retainer basis, which. Right. I guess I only want to make sure if, if there was a, I don't know if they've even existed. 
there's a firm that <coughs> provides only a couple of these services, let's say only provides special education mm -hmm. law, it, we don't yeah. want this to be worded such that they don't give us a proposal right. for special education law because they don't provide the rest, if they, you know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to make sure that it's worded in such a way that someone mm -hmm. could give us a proposal for but only some of those if they don't provide all of them. But it's yeah. not possible the way it's worded. In the cover letter, it should make it clear. That right, and number one seems to preclude that, so that was my concern, yeah. is that maybe we can read that. Yeah. Sure so we can wordsmith a little, so that's that, all. So just I think it out. should be viewed as a request for information, <coughs> and, 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 and I think this is a good example as to why legal services are exempted from some of the other roles that get to fall in the area. You just want about information about all their capabilities. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. you don't have to take them up on it. Right. But you want to know the scope and the breadth of their capabilities, regardless of what you hire them for. So I personally wouldn't get too concerned about it. OK. That says you have, like, you don't, you don't shouldn't feel obligated by anything you ask for information on. So would this request go to individual firms that we kind of select, or would it go to a central? You can do it both ways. OK. You can I mean, request I have a proposals from people. No, yeah, no, that's why I'm asking. You can advertise for proposals. So yep. you, you could target specific uh, firms, but you could also. And I feel we should do both. What's your feeling, Melissa? Oh, just maybe one way to fix the other issue is saying like proposed scope of services or potential scope of services, and then you don't have to you don't have to work some yeah. Um I would pick ten places, and I would pick them based on what I heard, what I've gone out and deduced from people who have who service like districts. Um, the, the legal needs of a high performing school district are very neat, different from the legal needs of a not high performing school district. Um, a school district that has certain programs, MECO or, you know, I mean, a regional, mm -hmm. regional um, uh, you know, I, I would, I would, I would spend a lot, I would spend, I would spend some due diligence time and I would get it down to 10 because you're going to get all these things. You know, and and um, um, one of the things is I went through the list on MISC, and it's a bit outdated. Um, but for example, some of the well-known firms in this area list like seven people, and you're going to, you're going to want to think about who you want to be your lead. Um, and some of it's I I I. Crystal clear legal service hire rests with the school committee, but it is so important for that council to have, for the superintendent mm -hmm. to feel comfortable no question. with who that person is. And so I think um, the firm could have the best reputation in the world, and you get matched with a person that, you know, isn't a fit. So. Um, I'd spend a look, do a little homework on, and I'm happy to, to help with that. But, um, and I'd focus on ten, but people might have other ideas. Um, there just aren't that many. Of, of, you know, I mean, you know that. I do. Yeah. You know. Is that good enough? Yeah, I think that makes next? sense. Yeah. Like, we're, we've started on it. We haven't finished seeing who the other local area districts yeah. are good. are working with. So. We can I'll narrow that list. I think the list is going to narrow to 10 fairly quick once we start doing that work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a f few that are used very frequently, so I think that will. The other thing, too, that I, I think I wrote, I, I wrote to Lori maybe um, just make sure you have someone with bandwidth um, if you make a change because um, some people without a lot of bandwidth can be the best lawyer in the world, but if they Get to your full issue. Yes. How do we, how do we evaluate that? So that would, yeah. Oh. 
some of that would be the, the, the connections I can make. I have had that experience, and mm -hmm. when you can't get time in responses, it's very, mm -hmm. very yeah. frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. And Melissa, some law firms disclose who some of their customer uh, clients are, right? Mm -hmm. So that might be something else to look at. Mm -hmm. To get references, some yeah. Yeah, you just have to get permission. I told you that's not. Or it doesn't matter. Um, and, and then I think the question is whether or not your current providers are going to be one of those, t you know, be on that list of ten, or whatever the list of those being on that dictates. So, um, is this a couple of us helping get to the end here, or? Yeah. Do you need all of us to? What, what do you need from us? Uh, yeah, I think we need to get this in a format that's us, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And then some of you need to see it again, if not everybody, and then bring you the list of 10 potential. Again, so, I don't know that we, so if, if it's a group of, if, if you want to work in a smaller group, I think we need to just be careful with yeah. open meeting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Could I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. on, on a number four, now, this isn't required because there is an exemption on legal services, but in a tip, typical RFP process, you separate cost first, and that's identified separately in a sealed envelope, and that allows you to rate the various proposals first, and then you take cost it into consideration. Mm -hmm. so I, would, mm -hmm. I would make that suggestion yeah, here as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good idea. From my perspective, having you bring us the ten firms means absolutely nothing. I know, right? You mean you know, she doesn't need to bring? Well, uh, you know, do you know ten law firms? No, I'm asking. I'm just yeah. asking what, yeah. what the, right, the mean, purpose of saying it is that we don't need to fit. Just a list that. Yeah. yeah. But someone. I mean, it's interesting. Right, and what's the most efficient way to help with the document without being a subcommittee? I was going to ask Melissa to help me. I'll give it to you. All right. Thank you, Melissa. I have twenty five hours. Yeah. Right. What are you doing tomorrow? Twenty five. Yeah, yeah. When do you get up? I'll, I'm happy to, to start it on. Give it, give it, yeah. That would be really helpful. We can figure out how to get it, and then we can bring it to you on the twenty first, and maybe we'll be at a place ready to act on it. Great. Yeah. I think that's reasonable. Great. Is that? Timely enough for you? Yeah, that'll give to me time out. to solidify the, the list. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. That'll work. All right. Okay, we're done on that. Um, we're going to give a, a CCHS parking update, and unfortunately, there isn't really much we can add at this point. Uh, there have been some meetings and discussions, and others are scheduled, but uh, there's nothing to report of any kind of conclusive basis. So or nature, so we hope to have more of an update um, on the 21st. Do we want to add a little context? <laughs> <laughs> we, we've been talking, just to frame Bob, I, I don't want to say too much either because we're still in such discussion. Just a little bit of talk of the town on permitting and things like that, what processes we need to follow. Getting, getting educated on the sort of, yeah, being in the water conservancy district and what the bylaws Say and different yeah. things, so we're just sort of in this research educational mode yeah. of yeah. getting all the right people in on the conversation. Yeah. Okay. Thank so you for plowing forward with that. Yeah, we'll keep on it. It's never as easy as you think. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's for sure. Right. Facility okay, use right. fees. So we uh, we have talked about that once or twice, and uh, you know there is. Uh, you know, a tennis program that's very popular in town who, you know, has sent us an email uh, expressing concern about uh, the fee, which is substantially higher than many of our surrounding uh, districts. And um, so we could um, discuss that and, and maybe lower the fee. But what's most important, it seems to me, is that we uh, over the next several months uh, engage in a comprehensive look at the whole user fee structure and um, get as much information as we can and, and then have a serious discussion about where some of these fees should be. Uh, obviously look at other districts and, uh, 
and take uh, take all that into consideration when we discuss this. So, um, so the number uh, was it twenty five dollars per? Yeah, we currently are uh, charging twenty five dollars per court per hour, and other local districts are. I have to look at it for sure. Between eight and twelve. Eight. That's what I remember. Yeah, 12. Eight and twelve. Yeah. And twelve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so, and we basically so, last time we all agreed that we would look at the overall use fee, but tonight we're just looking at whether or not we adjust the tennis court fee before we adjust the rest of the right? Mm -hmm. I think so. Because I also think we, we've got a new you know, director of finance and a new athletic director, and all of that is nicely right. timed for right. that look at it you know, this full summer. Scale review. Mm -hmm. yes. kind of, because I know some of it, John, correct me if I'm wrong, some of this, this, some fees are so small and you spend so much time trying to track down yeah. said fee and mm -hmm. it's sort of, you know, it's sort of, it's, it's a, you, you end up. Some, sometimes it's one or two hours and it's not a big deal, but in this particular instance, it was multiple courts for multiple days for multiple hours and it became a little more substantial. Right, yeah. So, so when did this, this is 25 now, I forgot. Did we raise it significantly recently? Or with the new court? I'm not sure exactly where the $25 an hour number came from. I, we haven't made a change because that's school committee change, but I think it's in place. We did escalate numbers over the over the years. We were going up at 3% a year just to kind of keep track. Because there's often so we've all there's other materials that we have to buy to maintain. Yeah the fields and the courts and the different things. No, but and if, different things. if I'm saying LS is 10 and AB is $12 an hour, we're at 25. If we were always twice, you know, theirs, maybe I don't care as much, but is it something, that's what I'm trying to I figure out. I don't think it was, you know, I think. Do we raise it? I, th I don't think it's been an issue before because of the, the, the quantity of use by, you know, it was just a few individuals playing doubles or something like that. It was not an issue, but when, this this organization came again because of the oh, oh, the right. frequency and the quantity, you know, that the doll is added up very quickly. I got most believe. people. No, it, um, yeah. it, so this program has been going on for a year, right? right. Yeah. Were they paying, know. you know, ten dollars well, no, an hour there were, last year, and then we went to No, there were. First of all, there were no tennis courts for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, for several years, and okay. and and prior to that, there That's were. True pretty run down tennis courts that weren't yep. used. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The program started in the elementary schools as an after school pro program and I think Willard has courts. And, and there wasn't any charge. And right. there wasn't any charge and they, and so it's grown so from that. And so. Yeah, this is a shock, yeah. Um, this is a shock and it, it was unexpected and I, I'm guessing that 25 came once we had brand new courts and, but, you know, some, yeah. somewhere. Mm. But again, it, it obviously demands that we have a comprehensive look, but. Yeah. Right. Um, for a community member who's who's built this program over time, um, and maybe you know, the the shock was also that it was twice as much. But you know, the the program is very popular, and I mean, I'm 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 supportive of at least aligning ourselves with the highest dollar at twelve, so that they don't go somewhere else. But that's and then do our sort of comprehensive look. But I can you know see both sides of the argument. I see that. I mean, I'll state my opinion very clearly. I agree with Joanna. I think that we need to do the comprehensive look. Mm -hmm. And I think we could even say, if we change this now, we could even say with the caveat that we're going to do a comprehensive look. No and, and we might decide that we want it to be more than 12. We might raise mm -hmm. it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that the comprehensive look is coming. But the way I see it is that right now, it's been pointed out to us that because this one is so high, our community could lose a program that a lot of the community members really value. And so therefore, I see value in adjusting this one particular price early now, because we can see the, the market data. Will that be a retroactive adjustment? No, I wouldn't. And the, I, well, because we're, we, you know, we, uh, we've been trying to collect on from the organization, and that's the source of it. I mean, if, if you folks say to adjust the fee, we'll adjust the fee, but we want direction. Oh, uh, if you think it would worry, John, I'd be fine with the retroactive if you think that would help us get the I think it will help, from them. I think it will help address the issue at hand, and, and 
then allow you to move forward with the, the planning and discussion. I mean, I, I, would, assume, go ahead. I would hope that any decision we make is not about the organization per se or the individual who pointed this out to us, but exactly. what's right for a tennis court rental for a authorized <coughs> community okay. user. That's right. Fair um, enough. Are there other community users at the present time for whom this would apply? Well, um, I would ask you folks to answer yeah. that. And I, I'm hearing that I think you, you would want to make a, the fee more moderate. And uh, in this instance, this is an organization that charges to give lessons, which and we've always made a distinction. We treat those types of organizations differently than just simple, uh, pure community members using it. Mm -hmm. There's always been a different rate structure. But when there's a uh, fees charged, it's it's done a little differently. Okay, so it's a fee-based program. It fits into that category, um, and we'll make a decision irrespective of who that is, because Absolutely. that's not the issue. Right. I'm simply right. asking, yep. are there multiple users who fit in that category at the present time? To our knowledge, to our knowledge. I don't know offhand okay. if there's other groups okay. renting so, the tennis. Yeah. So um, I may owe you money because I use the courts. <laughs> 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 um, I, I don't even know what You can work it off with legal services. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, then you, you owe me money. money. <laughs> yeah. I know. How do you pay? Is it when you is it if you reserve the court or? Yeah, yeah. there's a is there's a, a uh, there's a, uh, the a process you go through an online it. process. And it yeah, identifies, yeah. oh. it, the online process identifies the fees associated with your rental Okay, request. that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But doesn't the community use agreement allow you as a resident of Carlisle to use the That's a good question. Maybe, the that, maybe I don't owe you money. Now, now, if you're going to run a tennis <laughs> camp, then <laughs> yeah, that's a different story. I can yes. come and pick right. up my rent yeah, and no. play. Right. If, right. If, 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 you know, the school no. has priority no. and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 Oh, no charge to us. Thank you. I feel better. I got your right. <laughs> you know, we'll not be arrested on your way out the door tonight. <laughs> is there anything in the agreement that we make, that we sign, I don't know if we sign an agreement, but if there is an agreement, does it say anything about your council being good standing before you're renewed mm -hmm. for the next We're year? We're putting that, not with, not with this particular uh, organization or, or uh, we've, we've run into that situation before where people have not uh, paid in the past and we've kind of had to say, well, we're not going to uh, give you your requested time. You know, I think in a review, slot. we would yeah. create some line of return about that. that yeah. You're not paid up, you're not yeah. using the yeah. service. Yeah. Yeah. And it's incumbent upon you to come pay, not us to chase you down. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, you ready for a motion? Mm -hmm. or? I well, think I'm we need to vote on this, right? The vote's on, the vote's on later. Yeah. Oh, okay, so, fine. So Any more discussion? So, I, 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 I'm really struggling with this, and I'm, I'm the, the naysayer in this, because this is a private organization that's charging students to, to play, and if, <coughs> if they're not paying, then Melissa ought to be able to use the court. You know, like it, it's, they're I taking it. they're not paying, I think they're just paying. Well, okay, no, fair enough. Um, I don't think, I, really, I, I want to be clear, I, my understanding was that the, 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 the charge to them became as a surprise. I think the amount of it, yeah, I yeah. think they and were, they, I don't they think were, they were charged the rate, but, but I don't think they're just really, were just being right. delinquent, I think. No, I no, think. I'm not, no. Was yes. that what the community said? That's, so that's how it was So somewhere we paid. said $25 is <coughs> the right amount to charge, and I don't, it's not clear to me where that came from. Mm -hmm. Because we're not, it's, it's. Mm -hmm. And now we're saying it's not the right amount, and we'll go revisit that. But but I guess the message to this organization is it may be thirty dollars when we go look at it in the fall. <coughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Right. Which is why I mentioned the caveat that mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll just yeah. now, but it's still going to be part of the comprehensive peer review. It's no. not. But we're going to be hesitant to change that. We're going to be hesitant to double it or more. But we're also going to have a lot today. more evidence about what to do True. across the board. Um, with facility fees, I think. <coughs> so one of your concerns about community use, uh, would we be more content if we had confidence that a fee-based organization couldn't use 100% of the uh, facilities, thus denying uh, community users? Do they, in fact, use every 
square foot available? I don't think that's been the situation, but uh, you know, there's been a marked change in our facilities. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that, that, that may create that situation possibly. Or somebody says, I'll, I'll pay $30 an hour. Because well, these are the matter. Matter. You know, as, as a practical profit, matter, we're, we're not out there enforcing. Long. As a practical matter, the permit allows the user to tell the casual person, I have rights here, you don't. That's de facto yeah, what happens. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that happens on all the fields. Yeah. 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 For all the, exactly. you know, soccer camps. Who's got a permit in their hand and yeah. who doesn't? Yeah. 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 And these aren't the only tennis courts. Yeah, no. In Concord. By no means. I mean, if we were talking about the turf field, then it'd be a different story, but there's tennis courts all over town. Yeah. So what's your point? I don't know. What do you mean? Well, the notion about other people not being able to use the oh. facility. It's like if you can't I play tennis so. at the high school and somebody's either, I think you'll find another court that's open. Emerson. Unless it's Saturday yeah. afternoon on a beautiful day. So that's, I see the other side as, to the other courts, but okay. Let's move on. Okay, move on. Uh, Super 10 valuation. Oh. Yes, sorry. Uh, okay, sorry, I wasn't going. Um, so I sent around to everybody, and I know this isn't, or is this linked now? I don't know. It is. It is linked. Mm -hmm. oh, it is up there. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this went around to everybody. Um, Wally and I sat with Lori and went through. Um, the, the, a couple of different drafts and examples of superintendent evaluations. So we narrowed it down to what well, we ended up with 12 questions. Sorry, I don't have it in front of me yet. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the goal here was to create a relatively simple, short survey that can be sent out to staff, something that is not going to take too long for them to do so that we have a good response rate and also something um, that will be relatively clear and easy to synthesize once we have all the data so that it's data driven with one comment section at the end but not open comments for every question um, so I could go through and read them or not, I don't know if that's necessary the 12 questions I think everybody's read it but are there thoughts suggestions comments I thought you, did, you guys did a great job yeah looks good thank you yep I think it's very aspirational. It's all positive, and yet I don't think that's going to skew results in a way that uh, concerns us. These, these are our aspirations as a system. We did try to focus on um, the, both the goals that we, as a committee, laid out for Lori, as well as the various mm -hmm. um, one of the different standards. Standards. Thanks, you. <laughs> like the other word, as well as the different standards that we've highlighted. Um, and I think I put that in, it's in the draft that I sent around. We wouldn't, it would not be in the survey when we send it out, the standard that it applies to, but it's there for reference. So that you can see which ones we're targeting. Um, and so I brought up the left in this whole notion of surveying the staff. Have either of you checked, if, like, is there? Right, so we're gonna talk to the union. I've leadership. talked to both union leadership um, there. Glad we're thinking of doing it. Okay. Voluntary, completely sure, sure. optional. Um, it led to discussions of other parts of the evaluation process because uh, feedback is in the regulations for both admi all administrators and teachers too. So I think mm -hmm. there's good, good conversations to come. Good. Yeah. So then, timing-wise, and I'm pulling up the timeline. Sorry that I did for last time, um, but uh, that we agreed to <laughs> uh, finalize it today. Hold on for a process. Here we go, draft, and then that would be sent out relatively soon if we're looking at our process that leads to June twenty sixth. Um, we need to get this into Google Form, I think. Right, exactly, and so monkey. we'll potentially have it available a week from now. We talked about available for about a week. And then we'll all have time to see the data after that. Um, so you're t you're looking at the timeline you put together that yes presents a sorry which is not linked to anything today. I just no. pulled up my draft of it. But no, I last have. time we looked at a timeline, there were two different timelines. 
one leading us to June 12th, which yeah. we decided not to use. The first one leading us to June 26th as the final presentation of the review. So we had, as of May 8th or today, 7th, and we're day early, finalized the mm -hmm. survey. Um, over the next few weeks through the 15th, gives Lori time to complete her self-evaluation. Mm -hmm. Between May 15th and 22nd, or somewhere thereabouts, um, having the survey available online, mm -hmm. uh, all of us seeing the data once, it, once that's in, obviously. Between then and June 5th, all of us uh, reviewing that data and meeting with Lori to go through her self-evaluation and all of our thoughts. Um, submitting that, let's see, and everybody basically between then and the 29th, each of us synthesizing our own thoughts and, and filling out a review, submitting that by June 5th. So hold on, <coughs> sorry. The, um, so submitting individual evaluation forms to whoever's going to do the summaries on the collecting them by June but 5th. The period before that is school committee summarizes survey results. Do we do that collectively, or is one person going to do that? It sounds to me like Oh, so that... So um, when we talked on this, if we, if we do it electronically, it. there isn't too much to do, actually. A quantitative <coughs> survey, you're going to get summaries very quickly. So what happens? You have, the like, these are, you have... You'll have percentages. Six answers possible. Right, you'll have percentages mm -hmm. of how many mm -hmm. people answer of each, each category. On each. Right? Okay. And you could get fair. averages too if you wanted either and way. And then how does that dovetail into the evaluation form or what we do? That's what you have to talk about. That's what we have to talk about. Mm -hmm. And so it's the regulations taking that and suggest it's a piece of evidence towards informing the standards or potentially goals, but certainly standards. But if we're so if we're gonna that do finish our evaluations by June fifth, we will have figured out how we're going to synthesize this into our evaluations before then? Right. Really, if the right. survey closes the 22nd, we should actually, we'll all have data to look at the 23rd, mm -hmm. really. Yep. But right. there's no meeting between right. the 23rd and the 5th. It can be sent to us. Right, but that, the data can be sent out. Okay, so we're not going to talk about it collectively how to synthesize it. We're just going to... Right. I think it'll be... That was one reason we stuck with these kinds of questions yeah. because it's going to clean up fairly quickly. Yeah. You'll have one, one set of narrative to read, mm -hmm. but the rest of it's going to you be. You may interpret it differently than I do. Oh, well, of course. That's, of right. Course. Yeah. yeah. So, to your point, Joanne, I think you're pointing out that I have it's probably a step here in the original timeline that, that isn't even necessary, which is. The compiling. Right, compiling. Yeah. So, I have school committees summarize, school committees summarize survey results. I think we don't even need to do that, right. really. The survey results right. will just be shared with each of us individually. We just can like all anything else that we review mm -hmm. before as, as we... Like evidence. Okay, right. so exactly. then we'll stick to the timeline. We've got that before. I'm just trying to, so I know what we're all doing. Yeah, and then by the fifth, we have the individual forms done, and some said chair or designee will summarize all those forms into something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Would you like me to do that? It's, it's been uh, traditionally done by the uh, Concord oh, School right? Committee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> funny, because last year I was <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that much of a traditionalist, but in this case, <laughs> I actually can refute that. <laughs> oh. Okay. So why don't we let you two figure out who's... It sounds like we're going to be someone else. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll do it. I'm happy, I'm happy to do it. Does it help that somebody helps us? Um, I'm not sure, but thank you. I'll look. I kind of. I think. Okay, okay, we'll help. Thank you. Maybe. Maybe yeah. we, could, we could come up. Thank you. All right, we'll figure that out. But okay, so good. We have our plan, right? Everyone's good? I think so. I think so. Does that work with everybody? I'll be late. To the meeting? Late to what? <laughs> to, to get my. Oh, oh, to get. Okay, that's fine. That's my job to be late. Like. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I will send you electronic versions that you can fill out. I had them from last time. Okay, great. Well, so it's a blank that you can yeah. do the evaluation online. Um, the 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 survey goes to quote unquote staff. Like, is there is there a way to I don't know if classify is not the right word, but categorize people like mm -hmm. 
the teacher, role school teacher, staff, right? I, I don't, you know, I don't, administration, I, I don't know who, when we say staff, I don't know who that is, so. So in my head, that was the professional teaching staff, so give me feedback if you want it broader than that. Um, these are, we, that was who was in my head when we designed right. the when subject, because that's a very different. Good point. When we talked about the questions, it was, it was mostly the teaching related. related. The, the questions the, are teaching. We use the yeah. state survey, which is definitely geared toward professional teaching staff okay. completing the questions yeah. based on their administration. So that, okay. And this is, so then I don't feel like we need to select yeah. the okay. thing. That just mm -hmm. makes all yeah. the results simpler. Yeah. And over time, I mean, yeah, learned absolutely. that we want to do it a little yeah. differently. This is kind of our first time around. Right. I think you want to, um, that may or may not decrease responses if you include identifying information. But yeah, that's it, I want to be careful about yeah. that. Right. Yeah, I think it sounds like that was that. definitely something that uh, leadership, union leadership was just wanting to be sure they were totally anonymous. Yeah. So. Right. Or so that getting to the level of what building you're in or something like that matters, but. And you have a survey tool that preserves that? So we, we're gonna probably go to SurveyMonkey where we can't capture anything other than what they offer. Yeah, so we could. What school are you at then we can disaggregate it based on that. I agree, I think though maybe keeping any identifier out would increase yeah, I think the for response this first to this first round. Like, be easier. Just keep it high level. I think, I mean, just, just to encourage more Confidence and participant, in. right? That it really feels totally anonymous. For these yeah. purposes, what's professional teaching staff certified classroom or that's what instructional I'm certified classroom? Okay. How many people is that? Across the two districts, three hundred licensed people. teachers. Yeah, you've got about two hundred and twenty-five at CPS and about one hundred and twenty-five or so. Three something. Give or take a little bit. Three seventy-five, four hundred people. Um, it does bring up a good um, question, though. I think we I, we were sitting there talking about the questions. We were very focused on teaching. Should should we have a version, even if it's just taking some of these questions out? That's for all staff. Well, so I think we should go with this this year. I think, given where we are in the year yeah. and okay. the yeah. pilot effort of just getting this off the yeah. ground, so yeah. this is this is I will, round one. I will frame yeah. version yeah. one. Is, if anybody has a complaint, they can Not upsetting. Yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> Parking comes to us. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. I think I could frame it in a way that we're not excluding okay. anyone. I just we're don't just want really to... looking at the right. instructional. <laughs> it's the instructional part, so it really is licensed teaching staff. I think we could frame that really. Yeah, right, right, right. Which is, part, right, which is really yeah, the one of the main standards. Right. That's right. Okay. That's so, I just want to make sure we don't inadvertently alienate. <laughs> no, so from this point, point forward, forward right. the, you're going to finish the survey connection to SurveyMonkey and you'll administer. Yes? Yeah, I, well I think we've completed it. If you, unless anybody has yeah, edits so we or suggestions. The survey okay. and give, give all of you access. Um, yeah. And then um, we'll just fine tune this timeline and make sure right. everyone has a copy to do to, and make sure that you Clear your decks for meeting with everyone. Yes, yeah, so I just made right. myself a note to give um, those Because right now that's yeah. slated for the 15th yeah. to the 5th. Yeah. It's a long time. We could probably shorten it. It's almost yeah. three weeks. Yeah, okay. I, I deliberately put several yeah, weeks in there for you to meet with everybody. Yeah, so it wasn't I'll on my calendar and bunch that into your So why don't you just get to me okay. you want, if you Perfect. want to narrow that, that right. window and then I can be able to do that. Um, the I can, if it would be helpful to revise the timeline, just send around the finalized timeline to everybody. Sure. Since I have that here. Um, the, but that would just demand waiting to see what her window is. Given, given yeah. your okay, audience window. for this one, can you speak again to why we wouldn't list the standards? Yeah, you could. I, don't I, think, I, I think the reason. standards make sense for this given audience. Wait, like like I'm them. sorry, say I what? Like them. I, I oh, think. putting the standards. Yeah. Including the standard yes. that each question relates oh, to. Yeah. I think it would okay. resonate very nicely with the teachers. It will actually, because yeah. they're living and breathing that rubric. That's standard. The okay. teacher rubric right now. Okay. Good point. You've got to identify the yeah. source. Yeah. yeah, sure. We'll include it then. Okay. Okay. On to the next item, new business. Uh, we'll, we'll, 
saw the school committee meeting dates, and uh, you know we obviously went with uh, Tuesdays going forward, as we all like. Uh, it, there's just two questions, it seems. We obviously haven't picked a date for the workshop in August, and if we could maybe uh, get some idea when, when that would work for most people, that would be great. Could we send a... Do you want to do that by just a doodle yeah. ball or something? Yeah, that's what I meant, doodle ball. Want me to do it? Yeah, don't mind. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll send a doodle ball about August. Also, do we want to make some more of the CPS join? Yes, I had a couple other things I thought, to I put on your radar. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Um, if we just, if the Carlisle members would individually say, I will be available on that date if needed. So, every, you know, mm. everybody, and we don't, have, uh, Mary and whoever comes over can pick which days they're going to be, they're going to hold. And if we need a joint meeting, then we know we have a quorum. Because that's really the issue, right? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think about it that way. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I agree with your concept of one of the one of the issues is the way it's worked in the past. You, you don't necessarily you don't hold those dates in your calendar. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you're the first part of it. Is I'm trying to soften that. But it's no, a great no, example. Saying, no. But Both I don't. people have to hold it um, for no good reason. So, so I think that's fair. I think that's very fair. Um, but I don't think the goal should be to to just get one. If no. you truly have joint meeting topics to discuss. You know, the thing I've always wondered about, would it help if we did the regional business first and then CPS or vice versa? In other words, the Carlisle members could then not listen to the, the CPS business. That. We've tried some of that. It doesn't always work beautifully. Work. No, it hasn't. You think it'd be an improvement or more? I would rather be realistic about the meetings we have to have. So, okay. and I, I yeah. started to go back and look to say how many meetings do we add this year? Yeah. No. And, and I that's think, where we get into trouble. I, I think it takes some, I think it's been such a fast and furious year. I think mm -hmm. it's, you know, Lori's been onboarding. I think I would say spend a little bit of time this summer and, and when you go to your you know, charting the course orientation, they say, plan the year out. Like, yep. look at the school committee mm -hmm. meetings as a full year, right. and build your build a lot of your agenda right. over the summer, and you know, in budget season, mm -hmm. probably you're gonna need more. But I think with a little bit more planning, that there's there'd be a lot of ease with which to be able to pick. High likelihood dates, you know, I, and I know that's more work for you guys, and I, I completely appreciate that. Um, and I'm, I should sh stop talking now because it's going to affect me. Uh, I think it's reasonable to say, can you hold these dates? Um, but maybe I don't think Mary feels the same. The challenge I've had from my seat is every time we go to build a Concord meeting. I'm having very limited things that actually only pertain to K-8, and that's been, it must be how I'm operating, because I'm thinking, so K-12, I've been trying to process why that is and why you were struggling with that before. Um, but that's been the challenge that I've had as things come up. It's, it pertains to everybody for the mm -hmm. most part, mm -hmm. because like, like, like I said, I guess we're doing more systemic work. Um, so that was... That's my concern. I don't want to get into where we're trying to hold to the Concord meetings, and then, then at the le this is what keeps happening. We go to the build, and all of, all we've got is stuff that really needed needed to be joined, um, and then we're scrambling for <laughs> how to make that happen. So I don't have the answer. I can just pose the the challenge that I've seen this year. What if we did this based on similar to what Melissa was saying? If we look out over the course of the year, we do have a good feel for some of the times that we are almost definitely going to need a joint meeting, Bless you, right? Bless you. Thank you. Um, so I feel like we could take several of these, probably half of them, and say, oh yeah, in 
in October and November. You know, we're definitely going to need those both joint because it's budget season, right? Mm -hmm. And in uh, where are we, you know, March and April leading up to town meeting, well, it depends on when town meeting is, but you know, kind of look at the, the town calendar. Pick out the ones that we think are highly likely to need joint meetings and either asterisk them or schedule them as such, but then also ask the Carlisle members, if this seems fair to you guys, to hold all of the CPS dates in case. I mean, is that is that fair to ask, to just kind of block them off? And then if we don't need to make it joint, we won't, but it's blocked off in case. I just can't operate that way personally, like okay. to just hold a date, because as soon as something comes up and I say, well, that's a maybe on the CPS, well, I haven't heard anything, so I'm gonna go ahead and do whatever it is I need to do. Okay. You know, just so right. it's, it's, mm. Why don't we take a stab at trying to, uh, why don't we try to we really know schedule we do at the, we, right, the months maybe go back and, and sit down together and look at them. Yeah, and look at if a couple of years of agendas yeah. and say, is this yeah. really work? Yeah. I think you guys, what I, you'd rather just know we're doing it or not, and not keep well, trying to change. Because we know we're going to need to do it. Right. So yeah. It's not the meeting. I so think that's just right. 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 Like, right. Look back at the meetings. That right. Yeah. I think that's so right. why don't we? Yeah. Let's look and at the budget. Let's take a stab yeah. at that. Yeah. You know. Do you want to know we're going to need to change our budget? That's a little easier. Let's just get into it. I'll do that. That's a little easier than trying to map out. Yeah. Yeah. What we're going to be doing at every meeting. Yeah. One option is to take like. I mean, now, like, take every other CPS meeting and make a joint or something, you know? Yeah, I like, I like better Try saying it's, it's like, it's budget season, season, so let's yeah. make them all joint. Right. Or right yeah. before town meeting, yeah. those should right. be joint. Right. right. And maybe say, you know, right. mm -hmm. outside so, those CPS. The first joint meeting is until September 25th. That's so really see, really this is where it starts right up off. Yeah. That's a whole month of school gone by without a joint meeting. That for sure isn't going to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have business you need so to do. Unless the joint out. workshop. Yeah. And <laughs> now sometimes we have a problem with August and finding a date for a joint workshop. Yeah. Our workshop several times has ended up right. early right. September. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. means that we have a joint meeting at the beginning of September. Right. Well, we that. could designate, we could do this and designate some of these as those those meetings, this is really for Lori and the chairs. It's a meeting that we've added, and that meeting that meeting we will expressly focus on trying to do the joint work up front, so that you mean when we, members can leave. If they, so that if we can if we can is. segregate the meeting and the <coughs> joint stuff at the outset, joint and dual stuff at the outset, mm -hmm. and then. Yeah, I think the reality, Molly, is that's what we. Do. I mean, that's what we're trying to do. Every, every meeting's got a little of Concord somewhere, and, and yeah. either it's right. like tonight it might be quick, or but it, yeah. it sort but of no, means it's, yeah, it's a kind of like you got to do the whole all the segments up front so you guys are done, and then we can do redo the yeah. all the segments. Redo and just it. Right. That's what's got challenging. Yeah, yeah. And everything other than public, public, people want to make public comments at the beginning of the meeting. On either topic, you'll end up, but so they can leave. But. Also, let's just throw out there when you think about CPS only topics, the big one that will come up over exactly. the next few years is the middle school. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing that's going to be truly CPS only, right? right? right yeah. And all the other little things that come up, you know, yeah. if it's water point. fountains at the yeah. elementary schools or something. Right. But it, it, I mean, really long term, that's the big thing that will be CPS only. And so we can weave that in and out where we need yeah. to, and we can put it at the end of agendas if we need right. to, or the beginning, whatever's better for. Yeah. So I, 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 to, I took a quick that's... look at the meetings from the past couple of years, and one of the differences in the way we operated this year from prior years is that the budget presentations are at different meetings. Yeah. Um, Correct. Right, the, which the was because of the, what, and I remember planning it, it was because of the fact that we needed to get some of it done and we weren't supposed yeah. to have a joint but we tried to add one I mean, it was they were at separate meetings and like at the end of the year the but school improvement wouldn't have been ideal all the elementary all the uh, elementary and middle school right, right. like so right this could that. be at a cps meeting only it was pretty fine yeah yeah we need to hold some of the cps uh, meetings in such a way that when we have kids coming to do presentations mm -hmm. that they're first Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, so 
just looking at this and looking at what we do, I would say, you know, in the budget season at the beginning of the school year, we should have joint meetings. Exactly. Yep. Right. And then knowing that we are going to be getting some word from NSBA and going to have to figure out what to do, we, we after December, we, we keep a CPS in early January and, at, or, and then early February for really the building yeah. Yeah. need of that yeah. and, and right. target our right. presentations, yeah. and things like that. March, April, yeah. And yeah. then March and April, because we're, we're prior to, you know, uh, town meeting and we got, I don't know exactly what it is, but have, have those two months be joints and then save a CPS for uh, May and June of like handbooks and um, mm -hmm. uh, improvement plans. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we need one or two, but, and then the other two, you know, keep keep May and June as is is what I'm getting at. Except maybe make June's meetings earlier in the month. Yeah, that was all the things that I was going to bring up too. <laughs> yeah. The other so, wait, just I, I just want to ask how that yeah, goes go to people who are from Carlisle, who now have not every other you know once a month, but twice a month for five of the months. Let me. Can I? Let me just. Uh, it's about. It's about more being able to plan. Yeah. Sure. And would it be better if they plan that and then say, you know what, let's make it CPS, you guys want to come. Right. I if you have to cancel one on you, you might be too hard. Yeah, just, just flagging for planning purposes, the Carlisle meeting is always the second Wednesday mm -hmm. of, the, of the month. So just yeah. if you're thinking about moving any of these dates. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can, I, okay. let me, can I toss something out here? This will be popular. Um, okay. So the months when we think we have to have two joint meetings, we had a CPS meeting on a different Tuesday, and we don't do CPS business at the joint meetings. No. So those are very <laughs> well. oh, that's a great idea. We're so, being divorced this court. Will, this, will, this will prepare you for when they draft you for select board. It's been at least it's your last year. <laughs> Some of us uh, just re up. You'll have shorter meetings, just more of them. No, you'll be home soon. Yeah, exactly. And still, Again. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, it'll be popular, but it would be one way to, to make those meetings short. Because you know, these guys, are, I mean, the people who are doing this too are having going to have three meetings in that month. Right. So, second one. They're going to have a. You can come to that too. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm trying to write down so I can, we can really schedule it well. But. <laughs> Carlisle, it's good for Carlisle. Yeah, and, and it, we do, we, we got to get something, and then when we have our new member, we can yeah. figure yeah, so out. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if how about, to move it, how yeah. about if we work a little on a, a schedule synthesizing this together and see what yeah. people think that, and recognizing all these elements? Can I throw one more wrinkle? Of course. Oh, yeah. No one's here yeah. June 20th. So my biggest struggle this year has been how many meetings are falling right after a vacation yes and i have not been able right. to vacation yeah. um yeah. i don't know the yeah. answer we try i tried to look at it finding a different tuesday is not as easy as it sounds but if even if we move one or two i don't know i don't have the answer i just again see the issue mm -hmm. yeah um, it happened. And I just second it because I went through it with yes. Lori. You've all been through that way. You're all like, Lori, stop working. I'm like, I can't. There's a meeting Tuesday. Yeah. Um, the issue was Thanksgiving, February, and April. Right. Yes. It is a lot, so that's why I got stuck. I don't, I don't okay. know what the answer is because, of course, in February and April, the week before is vacation week, so you don't have that week so as an option. That week so I don't know what the answer is, but. Um. All right, I like this challenge. All right, you're on it. <laughs> I want to make everybody happy. <laughs> but the one thing I will say is there is a nice kind of people who like to come to the meetings kind of get into the yeah. We need a the pattern. Yeah, set we need, calendar. We need a set, yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah, agree. yeah, totally agree. Um, okay, so let me take a stab. I do think it's a good. Request to try to get some of these off of the we'll just put even one or two. So, so, I mean, to that end, <laughs> moving on. let's see how much less we can take on. Right? I mean, like the campus advisory stuff is a good example. Like, yep. We could meet every night of the week for three hours. Yeah. Like, yeah. let's yeah. see what, where we can avoid some work, I guess. Right. That's Not to be lazy, but prioritize. Be more yeah. efficient. We have plenty to do. <laughs> we, we do. do. And there was a ton on the agenda this year. Yeah. 
Yeah. Huge, mm-hmm. and, and, and then the big budget stuff. Yeah. 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 It's, it's been a big year. Um, oh, and on, but just to make sure this comment didn't get lost, the June meetings, um, mm-hmm. I would vote to move those earlier so yes. that our last meeting isn't after school gets out. Mm-hmm. Yes. What size does school? Months, no. <laughs> I know. But even this year, it's not going to happen. It's not still going next year. Yeah. Yeah. Senior year. <laughs> well, that's what I was just right, thinking. Then you end up with the third one's on vacation. Right. So right. I mean, like, it, it does beg the question do we switch to the first and third? It week did start to beg of every uh, month instead well, of yeah, second and fourth. But the problem is that. What's the school committee meeting during? During vacation. vacation. So Our during February. those vacations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, February, April. Right. right. So then you have to reschedule those February. two outliers. But overall, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that's, overall. that's a clip. But overall, yeah. do you switch to that right. and then the other ones are going to be the same? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So what do you need from us? Um, to support I, I, I think basically uh, it would be to go forward with uh, soliciting bids for, for this work and with the preferred uh, the preferred option or the, the the design being based on a Presby okay. system. Presby, how do you spell that? P R E S P Y is the way it's typed here. I mm -hmm. don't know if that's accurate or not. So I would recommend we not an agreement to give you green lights, keep going to get bids. Yeah. Okay. For this, for what All you right. recommended. Yes. Yeah, just a quick question. Does the analysis and the recommendation mm -hmm. suffice for specifications? In your opinion, for an RFP? Well, this would, this would be invitation for bids. Okay. So, little, little difference. Uh, we, we have a very, we would develop a very specific specification, and that's why it would be, uh, if, if, we were, if we were entertaining all three options, you might do uh, an RFP, but that would be unusual for this type of work. So it would be an invitation for bid with a very specific um, set of work, scope of work, and uh, and then we would look for the uh, best and qualified price for, on it. Good. Thank you. Thank you, John. You're welcome. On to uh, school committee policies. Yes, <coughs> thank you. So I'll talk you through these. We was it last week? Mm. We didn't meet was long it? ago, but we don't remember. Sure. <laughs> maybe, a, maybe the week before. No, it was the week before. Um, so we'll talk through what the changes are, and then you can send me back with any questions. Uh, the first one is policy I J N D. So access to digital digital resources. There's one minor update to this, which will make sense when we get to the next policy. The change is to not call it the acceptable use policy anymore. Uh, MASC has recommended it become an empowered digital use policy. It's a broader set of uh, directives, uh, which is really just trying to keep up with the technology and has become an adopted uh, title across, across most districts' policies. All of the rest of this is the same as it was in the past. One question, so under the Heading empowered digital use. Mm -hmm. The first line still says must agree to and sign an acceptable use policy. Right, that needs to get changed. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I struggled with empowered. Why did they change it? Simply to indicate there's more digital horsepower that we have to manage. No, it's about the tools themselves and the, the bandwidth of information and resources provided to you. It's about the what it provides to the user, and I think it was also an attempt to become uh, a more positive stance on how you're going to interact with the technology rather than a minimal stance of this is the list of rules. Okay. It's semantics, of course, to some extent, but I, that was that was the thinking. Heather, what, what policy were you talking about that had the, you're talking about the empowered digital use? Yeah, and the, the second heading is empowered digital use, but then the first line the first under that line. heading says all students and faculty must agree to and sign an acceptable use policy. So I was just confirming that that was going to change. We're on this. On IJND. IJND. Yeah. So two thirds oh, of the I'm way sorry. down the first page. It says Thank empowered you. digital Thank use. Okay. No, back up here. You're on the wrong policy. One before that. First page. So, second, first document has to sync up with the yeah. second document. Yeah, Aaron highlighted it so you can see. Yeah. Oh, Just that's connecting not, those. That's not empowered digital. No, we're, on, we're still on access to digi digital uh, resources. Okay. It's just syncing those two things up. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Nope. IJNDB is, is the empowered digital use policy. And this one um, we're recommending goes back to some of what we've talked about, not having the procedure in the policy. So in the past, the acceptable use policy has been this five, uh, two documents. One is for staff, one is for students, three pages each with all the rules and do's and don'ts. Um, I was actually glad to see MASC had done this because this is what other districts have also done in my past, minimize the empowered, now the empowered digital use policy to be the umbrella 
-hmm. to these, which then go in the handbooks mm -hmm. and become the do's and don'ts, mm -hmm. which yeah. fits the handbook mm -hmm. mode. Right. Yeah. Um, the gift you get there is that you also have one signature to collect because the signature on the handbook will in this would be inclusive of mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So that's the recommendation is to adopt the MASC empowered digital use policy as written. And then I'm going to be working on these with the administrators so they come to you updated in the handbooks. In the handbooks. Right. Great. Makes sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. IJNDC is an internet publication policy. We currently do not have anything related to this. <coughs> so this would be a new policy to our manual. I think uh, based on the MASC language, it really just gives you some guidelines for what we're publis pub publishing on web pages, uh, safety precautions for students and their work, and outline some, some protocol in terms of what's acceptable and what's not. Okay. All right, so shifting gears, IJOA field trips. Similar to the acceptable use policy, the current field trip policy is I don't know, six pages long, because it's all these forms that we actually give to the kids, it's like and three all times these of fail trips, all these rules of how far away the trip is and who can authorize it, and honestly, what I've been bringing you to for you to authorize didn't perfectly align because we usually bring you anything out of state or overnight, and there's a 75 mile thing in this that. We haven't paid any attention to that. If it's overnight and within 75 miles, we're still bringing it to you. So this, the, the, the MASC language is the broadband of what you'd expect in a policy that doesn't get into that level of minutia, other than to say, relating to the other, the gay cross-references, the field trip policy about overnight and out of state. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's still a provision. It's not that we've disbanded what needs to come here for approval. What I then need to, would like to do is take these and do a thorough cleaning on what's in here and in the fall bring you some updated forms to look at for field trip process. But it wouldn't actually sit in the policy manual anymore. Makes sense. Okay. All right. IJOB, Community Resource persons and speakers, we had one word we were changing. Um, the first word in the old policy said human resources are those individuals. We were changing that to the MASC recommendation of community resources. Everything else is the same. We talked some on the 48 hour notice. I think that's sufficient. We talked about whether it would have to be earlier. I think 40 hours probably will. We haven't had an issue with that. All right. Mm -hmm. IJOC, school volunteers. We kept this as is. The one difference from the MASC policy is uh, it not only references the CORI requirements, it actually says that it must be complete and inc insists that that's in place prior to volunteers working with kids in the classroom. <coughs> okay. Uh, just, Stop me uh, if you need to. Yeah, some people get confused with Cory checks. They'll come into the schools and say, I did one down the street. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so do we, do we need to spell out that this is our Cory check? We could. It's probably in the, uh, manual, in the information that as long as it's covered the, somewhere. the schools yeah. put out. It's part of the Cory requirement. That, right. Because you know, it's not allowable to share Cory information yeah. between institutions. I, I know, but it's a but myth that just I, I persists. <laughs> you know, I got that, it for the Boy Scouts. Yeah, Can't yeah. you just call them? Yeah. <laughs> it's a good point, Cory. Okay. J, no, I'm sorry, IK, student progress reports to parents and guardians. So we are looking, what you've been provided is MASC's version. It's only slightly different um, than what we had in the past. We're aligning it to say that 
if you see in the last line, let me see how we put it up. It says overseen by the superintendent or designee. It had a previously had a list: um, teachers, principals, parents, and the assistant superintendent. We just cleaned that up so it's a little smoother. Uh, but everything else here is as it was. IKE, promotion and retention of students. This is the same. Uh, we haven't made any changes here. Always of note in this policy is the last sentence that all decisions rest with the building principal. Mm -hmm. That comes up often at elementary school retention discussions and things like that. Okay. Uh, this is a new policy, ILD, Student Submission to Educational Surveys and Research. This is a required policy per the law, um, and so MASC has drafted it for us and pretty strongly said to us, don't play with it. <laughs> we spent a lot of time getting this to what it needed to be. It's um, had to be cleared through several other agencies, and so we're recommending it as is. I do think it's helpful to have a policy because we all get asked at different points to participate in things. And it's helpful to have something on paper. <coughs> it's, it's basically saying no student shall be required to be a part of these. Right. So something like the um, youth risk behavior survey. Sure. Is something of course, that parents can always opt parents out. Parents can opt out of sure. because of something like this. Right. Okay. All right, animals in schools. So what we, we re-looked at this based on your feedback from last time. So the part we revisited was under student health. We deleted the how many feet away to keep the dogs and re-read this, what it said, and gave it some more thoughtful process. Um, so the part we added, we added in, you'll see in these sentences it said anything that impact may impact the health We've added the words or safety because that stretches this to be a little more inclusive. Mm -hmm. And what I think our conclusion was, Mary and Bob can chime in at any point on this one. Um, we think what our conclusion was that if a principal deems something unsafe to be happening, that this gives them permission to make some uh, plans around that and perhaps make some uh, restrictions as to where the dogs can be on their school sites. Mm -hmm. Feedback welcome, but that was that was the thought process there. Do we need to spell out the principal? The second sentence says that was not until we brought to school. I thought this did a better job. So, so does, what's that mean about somebody? If we use the example of somebody walking to school to pick up their child right. with a dog. Yep. So that's saying they can't bring it on school property. So what this, our thought was this would give the principal some discretion to decide how to manage that, which is really one of our needs right now. Um, because if they've determined to be unsafe, which indeed we've had, that is an issue. There's latitude now to make that kind of procedural changes. Did you want or safety in that first sentence of student health? The end? Because all of the other ones do, or is it allergic? Now you're probably right, yeah. The health, well-being, and safety, something like that. Oh, no, not even that. At the oh, end of the sentence, reaction or otherwise, yeah, care the paragraph? health, for safety. Student health. Oh, okay. End of the, lat, the first sentence. Because all the other ones say health or safety. Right. I, I, I'm just, it's allergic, so maybe it is just health, but I'm just mm -hmm. pointing it out. The, hmm. I don't know that it really matters, but. So, sorry, just to touch back to Wally's yeah. question. I don't think I, sorry, fully understand the, the answer. So in terms of parents who want to walk the dog to the school with the kid to drop off the paper or whatever, this is they need to get permission from the principal first? Or is no. it assumed no. it's not allowed no, or no. assumed it's allowed until no, it's, otherwise stated? They do need to ask permission. That's what the second sentence says. Today. That's what I thought. No animal shall be brought to school without prior permission of the building principal. So to school 
It's the definition of two school. Right. right. We're is not that saying in the building or is that on the ground? So I, the way I was interpreting that, which perhaps needs more clarification, which is <laughs> probably going to be where the challenge is, whatever, wherever the principal's responsible for the safety of kids, I want them to be able to say, I right. need to make a yeah. process I here agree. that keeps yeah. the kids safe. Right. Exactly. That's the goal. Yeah. Right. Um, and it's going to be a little different to your points from last time. But it's different in every context. Yeah. So the goal here is that the principal has the option to make that plan. Okay. To reference a policy that's driving a decision. Right. That's right. right. And that's then right. with that, can we ask that each principal clearly define that plan and communicate it then? As needed, absolutely. Okay. Hmm. Um, it's needed, but yeah, well, it's as needed means. I mean, it means we don't have issues except in one place right do. now. Um, and so basically, if, it, if there isn't a problem, don't mess with it. Well, we, obviously we want to be proactive, but right now I feel like we're in a good place in the other schools, so it's one, one particular school that we need to change the plan because it isn't. And it allows the principal be. the leverage to say this is not safe for the kids. So. That was the thinking. No. Okay. This is PVD we're talking about, right? No. It's not. It's thorough. Uh, yeah. It's that dog blue. You heard about him, didn't you? No, 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 no. There's no, no, no any particular no. dog of any kind. We're just trying to. I was there. The, I was there last week. There's a lot of really well-intended people just doing great family things. That's what this is. We're not anywhere trying to impact that. We're just trying to be sure that the kids we're responsible for in the mix of that um, don't end up injured. Right. <laughs> so, wasn't well, a little more compact there too, right? So, yeah. yeah. Good. And more likely that you walk over to the right. Kids, right? Good yeah, point. no, I and mean, that's yeah. the great. It's, it's really such a community point. school. Yeah. It's yeah. wonderful. It's yeah. just we need a little, little massaging of the plan. Yeah. And all those people are there. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. give it, welcome to give it more thought. J I C H. We have modified the middle of this because of the expert screening, which is our verbal screening now mandated by law, where students are screened for uh, substance use in two grade levels. And uh, we needed to get some language here, and NASC has offered that language. So where is it? It's this middle section. I mean, everything under verbal screening, verbal screening those three section. paragraphs. Not the last one, Aaron, but everything. Yep. Erin's getting really good at listening to me and highlighting <laughs> as I talk. <laughs> Thank you. Those three paragraphs are all new. And they replace um, some more generic language. And this is a screening tool that we've already been using or just It's changing? a state mandated screening tool okay. that we've been trained on and using. Okay. So the policy's catching up with the regulation. Yeah. Is this uh, student specific or family? Either? The screening tool is for all kids in two, two grade levels. The, the, the district designates two grade levels. But does the, I assume it's, qu it's questions, right? It's very simple questions like, are you using marijuana? Are you drinking? It's about five questions asked by Any question staff. about home? Nope, it's all about their personal use. Um, doesn't mean it might not become an opportunity that they share that we then follow up to give support. And then this last one is also new from MASC GBEBD. No fault. Yeah. <laughs> So they, um, again, this comes from another group of agencies that have spent a lot of time on this, including the Ethics Commission, in response to all these opportunities online to raise money. And so this outlines process, well, policy for that, much of which says you can't, no employee can use that without knowledge of the administration. Mm -hmm. That's essentially the bottom line. Well, I thought we were going to put that, the note at the bottom that says what the definition of crowdfunding, I think we're going to put that up top. 
Oh, we can. You're right. So if you get all the way to the bottom, it defines some of the it lists some of the web pages, which helps you know what this is really all about. Mm -hmm. It's the GoFundMe's and donors choose and things like that. Questions? Yeah, can you point out the place where a person uh, has your approval acknowledged? Requires superintendent of school committee approval in accordance with the law and school district policy. So it's second paragraph attempts to talk about authority and approval. Yeah. That's a lot of detailed work you guys brought us. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It's a couple we held, yeah, so that I can do more homework and bring it back. Thank you, Mark, for Thank you. summarizing those. Yeah, Thank no, you. that's that is a job. <laughs> Anyways, um, action items. Let's go. <laughs> okay. I'll vote to oh, approve the CCHS goal plan. Club overnight trip. Mm -hmm. I thought I just did. Oh, you just no. said you'll vote to approve. <laughs> I second. I'm moving. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Well, give us another one. The next one, sure. Yep. I okay. move that the Concord School Committee vote to approve Ms. Sexar's request to enroll her daughter and Mr. Kendall's request to enroll his son in the Concord Public Schools and that tuition be waived. Do you have a second? Second. Any discussion? All yeah, is this is this a CPS and a CPS or a CPS no, this one's, and a region? This one's only CPS. The next yeah. one will be regional. Okay. Because it's so enrolling we'll the both in the Concord Public Schools. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? What's the next one? Move it. Here's the. I don't have that. Oh, here's the next one. Regional. I move that the Concord Carlisle School Committee vote to approve Ms. Malone's request for her daughter to enroll in the Concord. High school and that tuition be waived. Second. My only comment of note there is that this is a Carlisle teacher. Mm -hmm. Past practice has been to accept the Carlisle, the students of Carlisle teachers as they come into the high school. As they come into the high school. Okay. That's what we've typically done for the one. So, there haven't been a lot lately. Okay. There was one last year. Yeah, I was going to say, I think only one is currently at the school, but it's a nice thing to do. Yep. Okay, motion to approve the uh, contract for Director Fenton. I already have a vote. I moved that on this one. Oh, you have a vote again. Okay. Ask us. This is, this is you vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I've moved that the Concord Carlisle School Committee vote to approve the contract for the Director of Finance and Operations beginning July 1st, 2018. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, no. Any discussion? Mary? No. 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 <laughs> no. Yes. Well, nobody else did. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so now we're up to the um, facility use Wait, fee. Both Committees need to approve that one. Probably. I think both committees. Yeah, yeah why don't you both. do it both? Yeah. All right, motion for Concord. So then I move the same for Concord. Second. All those in favor for Concord? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Now you can pay them both. Okay. Good catch. Got you it. Go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, on a facility use money. fee, I'll, I'll make up a motion here. I would move that we change the facility use fee for the outdoor tennis courts to $12, which is the maximum of the local rates that we've seen, uh, with the caveat that we are going to do a full review of all of the facilities use fees in the coming fall or in the coming year, and that this could change again. Second. Do I have a second? Is that what you mean? 
Same thing. Yeah. No. Second, second <laughs> question mark. Yeah, you can't have second question mark. Second question mark. Is there a second question mark? Well, he seconded All those in favor? Do we need to address the retroactive? I don't think we oh. need to address when the sun sets. It sunsets whenever there's a so big retroactive. Rate. The retroactive. So, um, so men to include. Uh, so I'll amend my motion to make it retroactive for so, time well period. to what? For yeah, fiscal let's, year eighteen. For fiscal yeah. year eighteen. Second. Okay. Any more discussion on the amendment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. One name. Any abstentions? No. Um, I would. Uh, where am I? You're going to the drinking fountain donation. No, no that's right. That's true. Right. 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 No. Oh, right. right. Oh, we're right. Okay. We're not. Well, that's yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> I'd move that the Cocker Carlisle School Committee vote to accept the $100 donation to support Berkeley Drinking Foundation. Oh. Ripley second. drinking fountain. A, a Ripley drinking fountain. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Opposed? Nobody. Why doesn't the Concord School Committee have to approve that? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, actually. Make a motion the Concord School Committee yeah, to approve a $100 Concord. donation to support the Ripley drinking fountain. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ten bucks. So that's 200 bucks now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. So that's how it works. Can you inform the majority? That's right. Oh, well, no, you have another. You, you, can, you can move to adjourn. Oh, yeah. I move to adjourn. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Second. For the region, I move to adjourn. Second. 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 For the region, I move to adjourn for Concord. Any discussion? How about a second for Concord? Second for Concord. <laughs> Any discussion? No. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 For both? For no, both. all those in favor for Congress? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Aye.